the first 30 minutes kind of just talking about the players that made it to the final table. But this is not just another edition. This is a very special edition. This time, there is an official WSOP bracelet event up for grabs as well. Or at least a bracelet. It is a WSOP bracelet event. And we've had a ridiculous amount of sign-ups that we'll talk about soon. But what is up, Nano? How excited are you for tonight? I'm super excited, man. The prize pool is so big. I didn't realize that the first place was going to be 1.4 million plus a WSOPE Europe package. And second place also gets a million dollars guarantee. You know, I was thinking, you know, it's going to be bigger. You know, usually we pay 500K for first, right? Maybe we'll get like 800K or 700K. Who knows? But it was, it's been a massive field here, uh, like you said. All right. You know what time it is? It's picking time, Nano. It is picking right. time. I have no idea this week. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like normally, let me get my. I want to pick someone before you pick them. And I, I'm picking Connor Drynan. That's my guy. Pocket aces, pocket aces. This guy deserves some good run now. Last time I went with one of the Russians. He delivered in a big way. Arthur absolutely crushed it back then and looked so damn good. And overall, I'm starting to become a bit of a fan of the Russian poker scene. Whenever I watch uh, True Tell, I battle it out as well. Those high stakes. I'm like. I feel like we should all try to be a little more like Truth Teller. <laughs> that would make us all much better poker players. So I'm actually going to go with Viktor Ustimov. I obviously don't know that much about him, but he had success winning my country. He won the WPT in Amsterdam. Uh, comes in with 12 million chips. You know, that's a decent amount. And I believe in the Russians, man. I, uh, I've got a good feeling about Viktor. That's my pick. Going to start off with a race, 10-9 suited from the button. I think that's a pretty standard play, but I'm expecting Canada to at least tag along for the ride here. Yeah, I'll say the standard hit is to just call and I think they're going to get all in. It's going to be a bet and a shove. This could be someone out already or a quick double up for Kenneth Smaron, who came in in eighth place. Yeah, monster flop for Christopher, right? Obviously, the flies draw, but picks up the gut shot as well. And eight is going to give him the not straight. And he's definitely going to continue betting. And will Kenneth just call or is he going to go all in? He will go all in. The quick, immediate call by Christopher. First hand, tournament live on the line. Needs to avoid oh. a diamond. That is not it. First hand, Nano. You had a day and a half to be like, I made it to the final table. And in the very first hand, we are losing the shortest stack. I mean, that's just a setup, though. Well, second shortest stack, actually. Yeah, he waited a day, right? Uh, another day to play Diane. All that time, he was probably like super excited. He's like, okay, let's get one nice double up. Here we go. <laughs> Literally the first hand out. <laughs> Looks like yeah. Sylvain, Loosley, and Arsini are going to go to war here. Uh, it, it, that's this not... is a dicey coming up. Yep, and that's definitely not the hand that Sylvain is hoping he's up against, right? He's going my to use the, my last hand. I don't know if this is your last hand, mate. With 12 million chips, with 13 million chips. Uh, that's definitely not the flop he's looking for either. He's down to two outs. That is not one of them. Probably looked a little helpful. Yeah. No, I don't need that. We need a jack that's Safe. not a diamond. But that's obviously not a jack. We count pips, no paint. And that means that the shortest stack at the table will double up. Still pretty damn short, though. 5.3 million. Arsini, ace queen. Mm -hmm. he's, whenever he's short, he gets a little bit, he get a hand to pick up some chips, right? He, uh -oh. he might get double up or potentially here, yep. right? I think Sylvain's going to shove. So they often do shove these spots from the small blind just because they want to take it down. My last, <laughs> My last hand. hand. He does make the shove. The snap call by Arsene. But obviously he still needs to avoid the 9-7. Oh, no. Oh. Nobody deserves that. You get ace-queen. Drawing that on the turn. That's it, Nano. We are down to 7 Arsene walks away with $152,000. <laughs> Look at Connor showing us the 5-6. He's like, hey, I would have had you beat. I would have flopped this straight. There's a lot of good hands here. Should be interesting because these guys got a lot of chips to play for. Yep, Chris Oliver with pocket jacks on the button. And then we also still have Victor, who I believe hasn't played a single hand yet. He might put in that one extra big blind with the king-queen offsuit. Obviously, no need to have a three bet here. That'd just be a two wild. But I think uh, definitely calling is not bad. And you see what the board brings. Playing a big bot. That is a action flop. Only one overcard for the Jack. Stop pair for Victor and the not flush draw for Christopher. He might have to play a big pot now, right? Have to put in that one big one. But actually, Christopher Crook checks. This is going to slow things down um, as he gets checked around. Now, Victor, King you gotta Queen. Bet this. You gotta he's got to bet, right? Like, he only loses to, like, 
I mean, not only, but he loses the jack 10 sometimes, but you know, eight, nine, two nines, but like, you just got to protect your hand too often. Someone's got ace, 10, ace, jack. Oh. Like, he's just going to keep checking. I think he's just thinking, look, if I bet and get raised, I know I'm going to fold. Let me just try to show this down. I don't really like it personally. Uh, it just seems like if someone had a queen, they would have bet already. Who knows? But I think Chris is gonna, might come along here with two jacks. Yeah. He's got the gut shot as well, right? A 10 would give him the straight. And obviously, since he's holding pocket jacks, he doesn't really put anybody else on a jack, even though Christopher does have one. I mean, this is a, such a big hand right now for Christopher Croc, because obviously he's still sitting on the nut flush draw as well. Oh, Victor, surprise us and shove. Oh, you can eat 9.5 million. That'd be one hell of a play, my friend. Just, <laughs> yeah, he's probably just going to call here. Let's oh. make the call, but the nut flush gets there. Yeah, But that's okay, because he probably would have lost more chips if he played aggressively, uh, if you want to look in hindsight. Regardless, we know Christopher Crook's going to bet. I think he puts someone on a king, a king queen exactly. What mm -hmm. size does he go for? It's hard for him to represent that many bluffs, so if he goes... I'd go with 1.8 or something. Thanks, Reed. I, I feel a little bit more. Maybe like a 2 point something million would be reasonable. I mean, I don't know what he thinks of his opponents, but... Uh, he should think they're pretty marginal here. If they had a, you know, two pair plus, they would have put in a lot more chips at some point. He might actually go very big. Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> when he was think when he was thinking for a while, I was like, mm, he's gonna go very big, but that's man, that's a bit too ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> I like what Christopher Crook is thinking like, man, I don't represent too many bluffs. I I mean I represent like a, a bluff because like I probably would have bet a flush draw on a flop. But the thing is. Against Victor, who's, who's clearly just snap the King Queen's like, yeah, I don't know what you got. Maybe you're bluffing, but there's no way I'm risking all my chip stack right now for all in play. And Chris Oliver, you know, it's like very hard for Chris Oliver to have a big hand, especially it's hard for Chris Oliver to make a call there with one guy still to act behind him, right? Like, um, I'm not in love with the play uh, Christopher Crook took there with the H deck. I think he missed some value. Hands a fold, maybe uh -oh. like a pocket deuces. And well, it's just open ship from Sylvain loosely. Victor, Mate. your guy. He's got ace king. He's not folding. Yeah. No, I was about to say, if you fold this, Victor, then we are done. He needs to avoid hearts and sevens. That is an amazing flop. Now only has to avoid two sevens. The seven of spade and the seven of clubs. And if he can avoid those, yep, that's an ace. That's safe. Double up for Victor. You don't need to play a lot of hands. No, no, you just need to win the big ones. What a uh, wild play by Sylvain Loosley. What was that? Yeah, he's just trying to put some ICM pressure. He's just like, look, the 20 big blind guys are not going to call me here unless they got a huge monster. Uh, it was a very aggressive play. Seemed like he could have just went for a mid-raise into Victor, who probably is going to defend the big blind anyway. I don't know. It just seemed, it was pretty excessive, I would say. Uh, but, yeah. you know, Victor's back, right? He's got 12 million chips. He's feeling pretty good. He, you know, he invested, you know, some chips into the pot and got a big return <laughs> investment there. Conor is going to open up Queen 10 suited. And Christopher might put in well, maybe a 3 bet. I mean, he's been aggressive with worse hands than this. That was obviously against the limb play. This time, this is going to call. A stand still in the lead on a 775 board. I like that he didn't think about uh, just jamming in because Connor's been playing a mixed strategy of raising and limping. Um, so because he's been limping like, like pretty good hands, but not the premiums, when he open raises, it does kind of give you that vibes like it could be a strong hand. So you, um, when you're playing against a guy who limps, you need to think about how they split their ranges. Otherwise, uh, you could be making some big mistakes. Connor is going to fire a very small bet into this spot. Quarter pot, hoping that his opponent just has absolutely nothing. But I have the feeling that Christopher might not fold here. 750k into a 3 million pot, still sitting on ace 10. It's just such a good price. Um, my opponent's stack size isn't the stack size that can really multi barrel, so I get the showdown a lot more often. Uh, so I, I like the call there, base 10 high. Kind of wondering if you should bet one more time or not. Obviously, Christopher was in the big blind. You're always wondering, did he get lucky or not? You could maybe bet 1.2, but uh, if you get called by 700k on the flop, you get called by 1.2. He's going to go bigger than that, 1.6. I like the bet. Let's see if he can get it through. It's just pretty much he's reading Christopher Crook for 
those ace highs, those king highs, like the eight nine offsuits or whatever, oh, and oh. gets it done with just purely nothing. Um, but if you look at it, right, it looks really strong for Connor just throw out the three big blind bet there on turn. I know I'm a bit worried here for Danny R. We know that he's been he's shoving sixes and stuff. He's going to shove the ace ten, and I do not believe that Christopher is going to let the pocket jacks go. No so chance. Danny R. There's no nope. chance jacks are going from this guy. I'm with you. So it seems that Danny R is going to have to catch an ace or a whole bunch of hearts. I didn't see any aces around the board, so that is good news. All three aces should still be alive. That is not one of them. Okay, uh -oh. does pick up the flush draw on the turn. Needs Let a it. heart, a heart, an eight, or an ace. Plenty of out gets oh. the eight, makes the straight on the river. Well done there by Danny R. Now all of a sudden he's sitting on 14 million chips. And if you love poker, you gotta love to see that because he's been playing some pretty fun poker at this final table. Pocket aces for Connor and Christopher Crook has ace jack. Uh oh. Christopher still sitting on 20 bigs, but he may be steaming a little bit after losing that pocket jacks all in against the ace stand suited on the river. There is a chance that he just shoves it. I don't want to see it, but I have the feeling that after losing such a big pot before, and that'd be a fall from grace. He was our dominant chip leader a couple oh, hands no. ago, and he shoves ace jack. I felt it. I saw it coming. No, no, this is bad, Niels. We're going to need a straight or lots of jacks. There's one jack. And there is spade as well. Okay, no spades anymore. A jack and a jack only is what Christopher needs. Or he's out. He is out. Can you believe it? From 21 million chips like three hands ago to out in seventh place. We'll walk away with $209,000. But that got to feel absolutely miserable. We have uh, my man Victor opening it up under the gun with pocket nines. Chris Oliver. Might be thinking about a call here with fives. Go for a it's little tough. set hunting. It's tough to play with this stack size going for a set mine. He is still going to try. There's only one five left in the deck. But against Victor, I don't mind it as much because I think Victor might play a little bit Ooh. passively. Oh my god. Quads and quads. Yeah, I don't oh think Victor is going to uh lose his hand. He, he's nah. gonna he's gonna win some chips. That's the ruddy blessing, you know. When you do get involved with pocket nines and you, you'll flop quads. At this point, I, I hope that he checks because you want to obviously see these guys catch up. Ah, uh, Danny R is actually leading out with the flush. I mean, normally, I said, oh my god, at first, I was like, wow, that's quite a decent flop for 6-5 suited. And I like that he called since he's the one completing the action pre-flop. Leading out here. Oh, oh, oh. Imagine if you're Victor right now and they're betting into you when you flop quads. You're like, oh, oh, oh. yes. <laughs> A lot of hands could fold this uh, turn, but nice check is going to save him. Victor's one million. got his check, right? Oh, I have one million. 750k <laughs> for all I care. <laughs> uh, oh, oh my God. no. We're okay. going to lose possibly no. all the chips for Danny R. No, no. I mean, first of all, he has more chips, so he won't be eliminated. But I, I don't think he goes all in here or something. What will happen is that he's going to bet. And then Victor is obviously going to raise. We'll see how big he bets. We'll see how big the raise is from Victor. All right, 2.4 million. Victor is like, hmm. I don't even think he's going to go all in, Nana. I think he's going to go for maximum value here. And I think he's going to make it like 5.1 million, hoping to get called. I mean, I don't fault him for potentially shoving. He's trying, he'll be trying to get called by a flush. Um, but he's also thinking, what kind of bluffs do I represent? Hmm. It is a half pot bet, so it kind of looks like, uh, it's a, yeah, he is going to go for the raise. Can Danny R get away from this flush? It's so sick because usually when you make your hand, you're thinking, please pay me off. But now it's the opposite, right? And it's like, oh my god, did you really just hit like pocket tens, pocket jacks just now? Yeah, that's probably what you're thinking of, right? When you're facing the under the gun open, don't really put your opponents on quads. If you start doing that, poker becomes an incredibly difficult game to play. You're like, did they flop quads again? Wow, oh, good fold nice. there. Very really, nice. really good fold by Danny R. Obviously, he doesn't have the not flush. I wonder if he would be able to make that fold with an ace high flush as well. But very well done. Love to see it. Once again, it's kind of opening up 8-7 from the hijack. 
So Danny are just calls rather than a three bet shipping. A little bit surprising, um, but I think he's thinking that Siraj has been too crazy. Uh, but now he's got top pair, top kicker, goes for the check call. It's a bad That's turn a scary card. turn card, though. That's a really scary turn card. But it's, it's hard for Siraj to continue betting when so like, just you can't really get anything uh -huh. to fold. What a run out for Danny Art. This is not what you're looking for. At this point, you're just hoping that you still have the best hand. This could be a great moment for Siraj to take a step at it. Represent one of the clubs, even though he doesn't have one. Yeah, he's thinking about it um, because he probably doesn't think a queen without a club would call. Um, but there's a chance it would happen. Siraj is thinking, how often do you have a club? Can he represent a club himself? I do think Siraj can easily represent a club because you wouldn't want to multi-barrel this turn card when it pairs the jack because the big plan usually has jack 10 types of these types of hands. So. All in. This is an all in moment, I feel. Just pretend that the <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about that. Because Siraj has been playing pretty solid. It doesn't really seem like Siraj will do that. It is a big bet. Yeah. I love it. I mean, it's obviously very risky. If your opponent has it, he has it, and then you look like a fool, but. Right now, I think this is an absolutely perfect bet. Did you notice this, though? Look how many chips Siraj got remaining. He left 15 million exactly for himself. Gets called by Danny R. Really good call. Shows the 7 8. Oh, my goodness. Oh, actually, well, he gets Luke up. He gets called. What a call there by Danny R. I didn't even see that, but makes the call with the ace queen not having a club in his hand. Amazing call. Gave us the running hot. Connor is like, hey, I had a king of clubs, guys. He's like, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was really sick because it looked yeah. like Daniar might have lost that pot, right? But uh, Daniar yep. is a really good uh, pre-flop and post-flop player from what I've seen. I'm really impressed by the way Daniar's been playing. I like Siraj's bet, uh, but it's just against the wrong guy who's going to look you up. Well, look what we got here. Ace is just calling pre-flop from the bottom. And Sylvain completely missed this flop. Let's see if he continues. Obviously, Chris Oliver holding the ace of hearts as well here. Going to make him feel yeah. extra good about his aces. What's interesting is that Chris Oliver started this hand with 13 big blinds and flats the button. That looks a little bit suspicious. Now, I don't know much about his game, but uh, I think that's what Sylvain is thinking. Is like, hmm, do you have aces? Or do you have, like, king-queen <laughs> suited? Uh, so he is going to fire some chips out, but, uh, isn't okay. He gets called and turn a straight draw. Sylvain, yep. I think Sylvain's thinking, man, you really do look like you got aces, but I picked up some outs and I might not be able to help myself. That's pretty much the best possible turn card. I mean, the nine of diamonds and the nine of uh, spades. I feel like those were the best two cards that Sylvain could have turned there. He's obviously not there yet, but he's now halfway there. He's going to slow it down. He will go for the check. Chris Oliver will probably go all in because this board is starting to look... I mean, obviously, maybe not putting Sylvain on hands like eights. But, yeah. I, I love the all-in there. I think it makes a lot of sense. What does Sylvain does now? That's obviously a lot of chips to call off with just an open-ended straight draw. And then you always have the forward. chance that the... yeah. The Jack of Hearts and the Six of Hearts could potentially not even be out. Connor could be in a bit of trouble here with his pocket nines. As Siraj is sitting on pocket tens in the big blind. Yeah, I don't think Connor would call a shove here. It'd be just way too many chips. We've seen Siraj ship Ace King for like 30 big blinds. So pocket tens, definitely a good hand to go all in as well. He's going to ship it in, but uh, I think this is just a bit too much. Yeah, I'm not sure, but it's, it's tough to go all in because your opponent could easily have a big hand himself. Um, regardless, it looks like uh, Connor Dryden is really thinking about this. And sometimes, like, usually he's like, oh, it's a standard fold. But when you see someone lose some chips, he is going to oh, make no. the call. And this is very bad news for Connor. What a pot. 30 million oh, chips. No, That's the nine, Connor though. Dryden. That's the nine. Oh, no. Diamonds are still alive. Diamonds are still alive. We need a 10 or a diamond. Or a once upon a time chip leader is out. And he is out. Siraj finishes in sixth place. Will walk away with $288,000, but coming in as the chip leader, that is also not what you're hoping for, and still second in chips at the break. Nana, what is happening with the chip leaders today? You don't want to be a chip leader at this final table. <laughs> you know, Sylvain Loosley was looking very good at this final table, but he's starting to become seriously short at uh -oh. this point. This could be some trouble, right? Like, Sylvain yep. probably has to shove this hand. 
He's only got 11 big blinds. Connor, ace, deuce. I think he's going to look up Sylvain loosely with the ace here. Small blind against big blind. Connor has the life of Sylvain in his hands right now. Obviously, King 4 does have a decent chance against ace, deuce. We do get a call. That's it. Tournament live on the line for Sylvain loosely. He still needs a king or a four. He needs a seven as well. King four or a seven. Seven would give him the straight. King four or a seven. That's not it. And that means more chips are heading to Connor's way. Sylvain is out. We'll walk away with $398,000. And this could be bad uh -oh, news. This GG could be bad news. For Chris Oliver, right? Because he's going to shove. And Connor is coming in. Well, you said GG for Chris Oliver, which means he's going to get an eight. I know it. <laughs> the Nano Noko, Nano Noko curse is powerful. How many eights will we get? Just yeah, one. He got he his eight. He needs another one. He needs <laughs> another one. <laughs> no. <laughs> one of the last two eights or Chris is out. There were pips, but a few too many pips. GG, that is going to be it. Chris Oliver will finish in fourth place. We'll walk away with 584 no, $548,000. Yeah, I, I like the way uh, Connor played the hand, just knowing that Daniar understands ICM pressure a lot, especially because mm -hmm. Daniar plays a lot of satellites. Inc regardless, it's going to be Victor and Connor duking it out. Your guy's going to get KO'd right now by Connor Dryden, right? Like, just get him, Connor, just punch him out. And this is probably going to be it. Victor's <laughs> tournament life will be on the lines here with the pocket sevens. As Connor puts him all in with ace queen and for Victor to stay alive, he needs to avoid aces and queens. Ah, and no. we get both an ace and a queen. We need my guy's shipping this man, he's shipping it. I'm telling you, can we get pips at least? Yeah, too many pips, that's a 10. GG Victor will finish in third place. We'll walk away with $755,000. Had a pretty damn good showing at this final table, if you ask me. Really came alive when he picked up a couple chips. Uh, even made that cool play where he didn't have the flush. Got to, got to take the pot down there. But in the end, we are heads up between Daniar and Connor getting out flopped. That's just not the way. Well, it does come ace, eight, five, and it's just a straight draw and bottom pair. Uh, you know, no, no clubs are going to come when everyone's holding them. There's the min bet. But Connor's got the inside straight draw. When your opponent limps the button, they usually don't have an ace, right, with 20 big blinds. So I think Connor uh, is thinking, you know, maybe I check call. Maybe I check raise here sometimes. It's going to be a check raise. Okay. Yeah. Bottom pairs, it's tough. But the thing is, can you really put Connor on an ace when he checks preflop, given the situation, Ooh. and it doesn't fold? That's a really nice turn card as well, because now obviously the pair of fives will make an open and it's straight draw as well. What yeah, does Connor um, do here? He picks up a double gutter, right? A three would make a, a good straight, but, you know, seven could, would make him a straight as well. And he's going to go another bet. I like the bet because, you know, both players, it's a limp pot, so they're not putting each other on an ace that often. And uh, Connor can put a lot of pressure on these, like, five brags. And it's another call wow. because, you know, pair straight draw. Uh, does Connor go for it again? That'd be pretty YOLO. Especially because I think at this point, Connor might think that Danny R is sitting on an ace. Because we know that Danny R has been limping a lot of very strong hands as well. Well, Danny R could easily have like five, you know, the, like the oh, oh wow, it's God. the all in shove what? from Connor Drynan. But Danny R only has bottom pair, fifth pair. Can't he make this? No, is you sick. can't. This would be sick. I want you can't to make call. This call. You can't make this call. If he makes oh this call, I, I will get proper hyped. If Danny R can find a call here with bottom <laughs> pair on this board with his tournament live on the line, that'd be insane. Especially he's thinking. After... He's thinking here. He's thinking, okay, what is the, what's Danny R beat? Oh, just literally like what? A naked flush draw? The deuce yeah. four, three, four? But that's hard to imagine. Because a lot of, I think a lot of flush draws hit a pair at some point. So they yeah. would want to check it down. They're just thinking, Con he's just thinking, does Connor really have. He's two fives would have raised pre flop, two eights would have raised pre flop, ace x would have. He's just thinking, what do you got? Oh my god, this is so sick. I, I, I don't see him calling, but if he makes the call, that'd be amazing. It would Honestly, be amazing. be absolutely amazing with this tournament live on the line. Just a pair of fives on this board. 
What do you yeah. beat? You beat. He nothing. blocks the straight. He blocks the straights at least with the seven, I guess. Um, it's something. He's really thinking. He's got a lot of time bank to use to really try to break down his hand. I, it's tough though. Even when you try to break this down his hand, it's hard to find a bluff. I mean, there's so much in the middle already, of course, right? With he already committed seven million chips, and if you fold here, you're down to nine point one. You're basically sitting on eleven bigs. But this is an insane call to make. You got Danny to do it, Danny R. You you took that break, right? You listened to Rotterdam. You you gotta just you gotta just go with your gut. What is there to wait for? No, I can't fold him. Uh, I definitely can't fold him if he makes the fold here. Like I feel almost every single human being on this planet would fold this one. If he makes the call, that'd be amazing. He makes oh the call. God. What a call! Let's go, Danny R. That is insane. Wow, what a call. 32 million chips. Nanonoko, what did we just witness? That is insane. It's so wild. It's so hard <laughs> to keep track of everything that's actually happening. Danny R makes the most insane call, but then he's made a couple of fools <laughs> that are definitely a bit questionable in a heads up match, especially with the way that Connor has been playing as well. But then again, who the hell, you know, am I? I'm just sitting here <laughs> on the sidelines. Danny is like, he's a mad, mad genius. Sometimes he makes the most insane plays and he makes the, the craziest folds that have been yeah. incorrect almost always so far. Yeah. Um, but now he's got pair, min betting the pair, call. Ooh. I want, did you see that? I want to call mid hand and then still yeah. calls because most people emoji out, they, they fold, right? But daniel has got an emoji game. Yeah, but in this way, he actually gives away that he has a marginal hand. I mean, unless he's obviously setting up the trap, but he's kind of telling the truth here with his seven. And if you feel that your seven is good on the flop, you're probably going to think it's good on the turn when the nine's your spare. Oh, oh, oh. That's a big bet, though, by Connor. That is a very big bet. Daniel has oh, been no. making some big folds, but he hasn't fold this one. It, it's kind of weird because he trying to chooses his spots based on timing, feeling. I yeah. don't know. Something's going on. It's so insane how he just snap folds the A's on a parrot board there as well. <laughs> but now he's just sticking around <laughs> like it's nothing with his pair of sevens, which is not even top pair, of course. Uh, maybe the queen will save Danny or some chips, but Connor is... Uh, He's not going as big as I expected him. I think he just wants to call. And he's like, well, if he does call, he there makes the call. Oh, no. We're back well, to where we were. But actually, worse. It's worse. 16 yeah. million before when the break started. Connor just <laughs> fires 6 million chips. Obviously, he did pick up the flush draw. But Danny R is thinking about raising? He's well, thinking about, I... can't you? He, he can't doesn't call. have anything. No. He's definitely not calling, but he's thinking about racing. He's thinking, how do you have a queen to bet this? Oh it's my a god! Raise from Danny R. Oh my god! I want to read the poker book that he's been reading. I just want to know what's in there. I don't know. Connor's, oh, Connor calls. Call. Rivers at eight. Oh my god! Can Danny uh, R? Well, if this if this goes check check, I don't think Connor can really pull the trigger here with his busted flush draw. He's Connor, got four Connor's seconds, by the way. Oh my god, and he does make the bluff. What the? These guys are nuts. Nana no go. They're beyond nuts. Danny R, if his read is right that his Connor would not have a queen, he might be able to find a call here. He's got six minutes to choose. This is the most insane, another insane hand. I didn't think we were going to get such a crazy hand again. And it does make sense. A busted flush draw would play this hand exactly the way it's been played. It's a tough call to make. It does fold, unfortunately. Oh, it he shows, shows him it. the bluff. He shows it. Oh, if he Going shows in, it, this Jack might call. Oh, this roller coaster will never end. Danny, I got to call this. Danny makes the call, needs to avoid the nines to keep his tournament dream alive. Flop is pretty safe. River is, uh, or turn is safe as well, but it got a little scary there. Is it paint? No, it's paint. Oh, no, no, it's, it's a, a nine. nine. No. Over. <laughs> It's a nine, and that means it is all over. Connor will walk away with the bracelet and $1.4 million for winning this event. And of course... The high roll is Super Millions, played over at GG Poker. You guys just watched a little recap of last week's final table, which was obviously spectacular because it was an official WSOP event. 
now we're sort of back to normal but we still got one hell of a show in store for you guys i'm of course going to be one of the hosts kevin lecoy also known as rotterdam in the world of starcraft 2 and as always i am joined by nano noko what's up nano hey what's up man yeah it's been uh really awesome here uh, doing the 10k super moons with you. What, what episode are we on now? Like 14, I believe, or something? That is correct. It's the 14th 14. week already. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, like we've been hyping it up, right? And eventually we got to the World Series event uh, where it paid, what, 1.4 million for first. Connor Drynan did take that down against Danny, our heads up. And that was like, I would say, the <laughs> best heads up match we've ever had in the 10k super millions. Um, uh, do you agree with that? Like the action was super crazy, right? I mean, uh, the storyline, the hands that we saw, some of the falls, we were like, what? Some of the checks on the river were like, what? But then some of the calls, the uh, incredibly outrageous 7-5 call, I believe it was with the pair of fives. I mean, last week was awesome. There was just no other way to put it. So yes, Nano, I would agree. I think that was our best so far. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, you know, we're back to another event today. Uh, a lot of names we've seen before some new names all this stuff so you know it's just like they're all very special in a very different way right like you know we had like the fb tim riley we had the adama mm -hmm. winning three times we had you know like that holiday war who was super crazy guy you know just <laughs> a lot of cool stuff that's happened and i'm i'm excited for today yeah, i'm excited as well of course you guys know it the official poker action starts 30 minutes past the start of this broadcast so we have a little pre-show where we will go over all nine players that has made it to the final table of this week's edition and this is actually the second biggest edition we've had so far and you know we everybody knows we started with like 195 198 signups then we got into the 210s the 220s and it's kept getting bigger and of course last week was outrageous because we had a WSOP bracelet on the line as well but even this week is by far and away the second biggest field we've had with 352 runners I saw a couple of guys buying in four five and one of our guys the European even tried six times this week Nano six times to make it to the final table unfortunately for us uh, this time it seems like european doesn't always win you know some people think how does he always do it apparently no no he doesn't always do it because this time it just wasn't meant to be yeah well you know sometimes the canadians gotta win right no i'm just kidding um <laughs> regardless um i did i believe limitless i think he might have final table bubbled he event, bubbled correctly. He final table bubbled limitless i saw it 10th place when i saw that in the lobby actually when i woke up on monday or when i got home actually on monday because i was uh, away for the weekend a little getaway spent a couple times in the forest I was like, no, that would have been so sick. I mean, after watching him play all these crazy hands and the nosebleeds, I think everybody would have loved to see Limitless make it to the final table, but maybe next time, Nana. Maybe next time, but it's just cool. Of course, like you've been mentioning, uh, the high stakes cash game still popping off. 500, 1000, 2000, Straddle, Limitless, and True Teller pretty much playing almost every single time. A, a lot of other big names, some of these guys that play the Super Millions joins as well it's just been crazy it's like it's not just one table it's like four tables going on at the very same time and just people just losing these big pots and limitless of course going crazy as well like he's very good of course but man he makes some sick plays i don't know if you saw that hand against chris brew with the seven deuce did you see that one no i did not see it oh i'll just give it a quick rundown apparently he three bet seven deuce suited called a mm -hmm. four bet floated the flop on an ace queen three board or something like that with no backdoor draw yeah. Checks him on a turn. He has a gut shot. He bets and rivers a little wheel straight, shoves and gets called by like the ace Ted and just win like it's like a two hundred, it's like five hundred k pot minimum. It was just <laughs> ridiculous. Limitless sometimes just goes. I'm gonna stick it to you. So basically, what you're telling all of us at home is that we don't have to feel too bad for limitless bubbling at the final table. Of course. <laughs> okay well then it sounds like you had a great time railing all the action again like i said i actually uh you know i was away from the computer for a couple days so i missed one of the new events that we started over at gg poker but i'm generally very excited to participate in the next one because from now on every saturday i believe it starts at 1 p.m but i'm not 100 sure about that there is a 200 dollar uh, 210 dollar bounty beat the pros where if you knock out one of the pros or one of the influencers or one of the streamers you get a little bonus as well and then all of those guys will be playing the same tournament i would have played on saturday if i was home but i will definitely be playing next saturday so 
Yeah, if you guys are uh, enjoying watching some of us play, if you want to buzz me, make sure to join one of those tournaments because that seems like a lot of fun. Anyway, mate, we've got 25 minutes until the cards go up in the air. So why don't we take a look at the nine players that have made it to the 14th final table of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Poker. And of course, we're going to take a look at some of the hands they've had on their way to this final table as well. So let's bring it on. Let's take a look at our chip leader tonight, who is going to be our first player. I mean, we already know. But maybe you guys at home don't know. It is going to be Rudy Ratlos. Now, what can you tell us about Rudy, uh, Nano? I don't know Rudy Ratlos at all, but apparently he crushes the high rollers. You can see he plays all the side events, like the 10Ks. Um, he's got a lot of wins so far. He's played the Super Millions five times. Apparently, he hasn't cashed yet, but when he finally cashes, he's got over 100 big blinds coming in. So, uh you know, this is one of those final tables where I haven't seen someone come. I don't know. Has someone come into the final table 100 big blinds before in 10K Super Millions? I don't recall. A uh, hundred? I'm not 100% sure about. We've had a couple of very dominant ship leaders, but obviously it's hard to really... I mean, Holiday had close to that and that field was smaller. So that must... I think that was actually 140 big blinds back then, if I recall correctly. But mm. I'm not totally sure. But I mean, TLDR, he's got a lot of big blinds to work with. Yeah, definitely agree. Um, I don't know him, but he's probably got some some moves like all these guys, right? <laughs> uh, absolutely. I mean, the GG winnings look great. It is pretty crazy that he has played five times, didn't cash one time, and now does come into this final table as ship leader and a pretty dominant one uh, in this case. But hey, I mean, maybe saving all of his run good for that one special run. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Rudy had on his way to this final table. And then uh, this is where I need you already, because I took a look at this hand and I'm like, is he value betting? Is he bluffing? Is this a, you know, what is happening on the river, Nano? Talk us through. Yeah, I looked at this hand too and I was a little bit confused because on the river, I'm like, okay, he looks like he's trying to bluff uh, the king, right? Like try to represent he's got a king, maybe gives opponent. But then when you look at it, when you think about it a little bit more, it it actually seems like it's a value bet. Um, it is a blind versus blind situation. So in these spots, you can value bet a lot thinner, but this is still a very thin value bet. Uh, usually most people, when they bet this river and get called, they get looked up by like the King seven, the King 10 or something, you know? I don't know how this guy figured it out, but uh, he got a little bit of value. You can't just call him with uh, ace high thinking he's got a bluff or, or the nuts. Well, I look forward to more of those kinds of river bets tonight because then I think we're in for one another party where we can both decipher together whether or not he is value betting or if it's a bluff and then we'll see what their opponents do as well. Uh, obviously, congrats to Rudy for coming in as the chip leader but we have seen chip leaders fall at these final tables so no need to celebrate just yet. Let's take a look at our second player that has made it to the 14th final table. It is Isaac Baron. A WSOP bracelet winner has cashed in the High Roller Super Millions a couple of times, but has never made it to a final table. So it's cool to see a new face make it this far. It's funny. Yeah, he is a new face, but he is actually a very old face in the online tournament scene. Uh, you can see he was card player, online player of the year in 2007. That was 12 years ago. Oh my goodness. Uh, this guy was playing to, uh, ever since I started playing, or maybe even sooner, who knows. But uh, he was regarded as the very best tournament player at one time way back when. Uh, it was like no questions asked. Uh, they always he, he goes by the name Wes Menlo, I believe. And uh, they, they would all he would always come up as the best player. Um, it was just hands down. But this was like, you know, eight to ten years ago. Uh, and then I didn't really hear much about him for a long time. Uh, maybe after Black Friday, he just took was quiet a bit. But then like he kind of started playing live a bit more and you can see he got in 2014 he won 1.2 million a live event uh, he got fourth for 900k and like did really well in the span uh, but still a bit quiet in the online scene but just he's still a very strong player see a lot of these guys from way back when that play nowadays you know if they haven't been studying they're gonna get wrecked but now it seems like he's done his homework and he's still doing very good I mean, uh, it's funny you say he was such a big name because back then I was also following poker already a bit and watching all the shows. And uh, this doesn't ring any bells to me, but obviously maybe I had my, you know, the times that I focus. It, and it was before like there was more shows he was doing really well. It was, this is like a really long, maybe 10 years ago where he was like regarded yeah, as the but best. I, 
I was watching much, poker yeah. back then, you know? But like, only I'm... online poker. I guess he was never on the ESPN so much, even though this video yeah. looks pretty old. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, let's take a look at one of the hands that Isaac Baron had that brought him to the final table. I think this one is perhaps a little more straightforward, but maybe there is something that you see when you look at the hand history that really speaks out to you. Well, in this spot, I guess the river is the most important. You know, some guys, right, whenever they see the four straight, they're just like side check, but you can see that Isaac Barron is still going for the value. Now, of course, with trip fives and king kicker, it's a lot easier, but you know, it, it's still something to be cautious about, uh, you know, when those straights get there. But the important thing is, I guess the four is unlikely to hit your opponent straight from the small blind. Uh, it was pretty good hand reading, and he did get called by his opponent, who was also going to be at this final table. So would you say that Isaac Barron is like a real legend of the online scene, or is that maybe giving him too much props? So would you really go that far? No, I, I actually would say, I would say like if, right. if you ask tournament players today, like who was the best, you know, like eight, 10 years ago, they, they this he's probably the name that would come up, uh, at least the top two or three guys, 100%. Um, but would That's you ask these same guys today, is he one of the best today? I don't think his name would come up, probably because all these other guys are just like, been shining a bit more, but I, I think that Isaac Barron, I wouldn't be surprised he's he's still really, really good. Uh, I mean, I, I do believe that if you can make it to the top ones, you can always do it again, especially if you put in the hours, right, in a game like poker. It's not like, obviously, you're going to have to update your knowledge, but it's not like everything you've ever learned is completely useless. So uh, I'm very excited for him right now. I honestly didn't know that he was such a big name back in the days. It's a long time ago, but it's really cool to see some of those OG online guys have proper runs in the year 2020. And I honestly feel there's a lot of people coming back to online poker with GG Poker taking off as much as it's done over the last few months but uh, awesome i'm excited got me on board let's take a look at our next player that has made it to the final table isaac baron by the way came in with 83 big blinds so he's got a lot of big blinds to work with as well uh next up is a rather complicated name now i'm dutch nano and i can tell you that that's not a very common dutch last name but maybe you can help me out over here um well his first name looks like it's oh Look, we, we're like, we don't want oh, to do his oh, name, but oh. don't worry. We'll fix in the graphics. Here's Mikolai, it looks like. Uh, it's a nosebleeds PLO cash game player. So he probably doesn't really play tournaments too much, but just like, look, I just uh, played some PLO, won like $100,000, who knows? He's like, why not throw in 10K or five, 10K into this event and see what happens? And he's currently in third position. Yeah, I mean, obviously he has a lot of uh, impressive offline scores as well. We can see him taking uh, fifth place at EP Barcelona. Uh, he is originally from Belarus, I believe. So maybe he just moved to the Netherlands because he thinks the Netherlands is a beautiful place. I mean, we used to have a decent casino scene and even some proper tournament series, I think, especially in Amsterdam. But even in some of the other cities in the Netherlands, we had some proper tournaments. But uh, yeah, cool to see. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mikolai had that brought him to the final table. So even though he's wrapping the Dutch flag, I think we can refer to him as the Belarusian PLO, perhaps Crusher. Um, this is quite the hand, Nano. <laughs> Talk us through. Yeah, this is awesome, right? Uh, he's playing the hand against Ali and Simerich, who's also very good. He call he calls a three bet of eight nine suited, which is pretty reasonable. Flops a flush draw. He call, uh, and then his opponent bets again on the turn. That's always scary, right? When someone three bets you, they bet the flop and they bet the turn on the ace or king high board. They represent the ace king pretty hard, and it looks pretty credible. River comes another king, and Ali checks and. It's still very credible for Ali and Simmer to actually have a king here, you know, because if his opponent has a king, he'll probably shove himself. So Ace King doesn't really need a bet. Maybe try to pick off those flush draws and then also pick up the, you know, the other value bets. Uh, so, but you can see it's a very bold move. To, his opponent still shoves a 9-8 high and gets his opponent to fold. And, you know, PLO players, they're not afraid to play big pots, right? Because, you know, they're forced to get it in a lot, right? So like you can see here, he just, this is a huge pot of course, and he's still willing to shove it in on the bluff. <laughs> and uh, one hell of a bluff as well, because it's not one of those bluffs where it's like, well, you know, my opponent didn't have much, but he's forced to call anyway, so maybe we'll still win. It's like, no, this is like nine high. <laughs> Playing nine high on that board, but uh, well done. I mean, this kind of a hand just gets me very excited as well. And I like what you said about the PLO guys. They do tend to be a little crazy and they are willing to get involved. So hopefully that promises a lot of good tonight. It's the first time we see this young man at the final table. 
but uh, hopefully not the last and hopefully we'll get to see more moves like this let's take a look at our next player at the final table who is actually believe it or not nano someone that i battled with in one of the wsop events i forgot which one it was but he was at my table he was short stack uh he shoved fours into ace king and the fours held and i could have knocked him out i could have taken his bounty but i failed but what else can you tell us about Mario Mosbeck that's perhaps a little more relevant? Even though oh. the player bio looks interesting. <laughs> it is very interesting. But I, was, I thought you were going to say he got into fours and hit a set. But <laughs> regardless... He didn't even need to. Didn't even need to. Uh, I believe he's a, he's an influencer. Um, you know, he's an Austrian footballer. Like, I, I guess he's a professional footballer, you know, and decided to play uh, poker. And he doesn't play poker professionally, from what I understand, but probably is a very big... A uh, fan of it. Uh, he's a member of the Poker Codes Grindhouse. The Poker Code is a training site by Fedor Holtz. Uh, and, you know, whenever they get those grindhouses, man, you know you know those guys are getting very, very good. So this guy is clearly trying to get good. Uh, you can see he used the staking feature and sold at, so tried to sell 90%. And he sold out 90%. Uh, maybe they're a fan of his football. Maybe they're a fan of his poker. Maybe it's a bit of both. But Fedor Holtz did buy... 35% of that, and this is only the second time he's played the Super Millions, and I've heard this guy's he's he's improved a lot, you know, especially for a guy who doesn't play, uh, who, who was a professional football at one point, right? So he hasn't put in 10 years of poker, right? This guy's probably put in like a couple at, at most, and not even like full schedule. Well, when I played with him, I actually thought he was a bit wild, but obviously every tournament is different. And I think at this final table, he might behave a little bit more. What I am expecting is some proper emoji use out of him because he was spamming emotes against me. So uh, hopefully we'll get some of that tonight and we can have a little giggle or two. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mario had that brought him to the final tables of the high roll, a super million. We've got the six, seven here. And uh, well, that seems like a little bit of a, uh, let's say a decent size bet on the river, but talk us through, Nana. Well, I think you're right that you said he thought he was a little wild, and you can see why, right? He's betting in spots when uh, he's turning his hands into bluff. And this is actually a very good um, sign of a very strong player because usually when you check call to flop and your opponent checks down, right, uh, you're just trying to show down your little pair. But it's about turning your hands into bluff when to do it. It actually makes a lot of sense to, for him to turn his hand to bluff because Isaac Barron probably would multi-barrel the turn with an ace. So the fact that he checks the turn to ace means that he probably has either air or he's got some showdown value that isn't an ace. So say like a pocket sevens, eights, nines, a 10 jack that made a pair, something like this. And if you think about it, when Mario check calls a flop, check, check the turn and bets pretty big on the river, what hand is he representing as a bluff? very rare because you can't really think of much uh, unless he's turning his hand to a bluff uh, so it's a very credible um, I like the play a lot and uh, I think some people just don't do it because you know they think they got showdown value but uh, I guess he's learning something from Fedor Holtz well living on the edge based on this hand and from the maybe 60 70 80 ends that I play with him I can also guarantee you that this man is living on the edge, but maybe he's going to slow down a little bit right now that he made it to the final table and try to uh, ladder up a little bit since he sold 90% of the action. Obviously, you kind of feel responsible as well and making everybody else incredibly happy and laddering up a little bit, even though I'm sure Fader is fine, but maybe a couple other people that bought like 5 or 10%, they're like, ladder, don't go crazy, just ladder. So that's going to be fun. Let's take a look at the next player that's made it to the final table. And that is a uh, very familiar name. We have seen him at a final table. Back then, he busted relatively early. As you guys can see in the bottom right side, he took eighth place on August 2nd. But Kyle Burns, he's back, Nano. Yeah, Kyle Burns, uh, They, uh, he's, uh, he's from Australia, uh, Geelong, which is close to Melbourne. I, I, I know him a bit. I've, I've talked to him a lot. Uh, him and Michael Adamo are considered the best Australian tournament players as of right now. I think it's uh, just not really any... No, yeah, it's just these two guys for sure. There's not like a third guy that might be better than these two guys. Uh, they're very good. Uh, Kale Burns uh, used to be primarily a cash game player uh, that played in Macau and stuff like this, he's told me. 
Uh, but now he plays tournaments because, well, he thinks they're soft and he's been crushing them. Uh, he does. He just plays every live tournament. He plays every uh, online tournament out there. He just does very well. And he had a really nice run, I think, uh, in 2018 and 19, as you can see. Uh, he's very aggressive, very creative, and uh, he's a tough player to play against uh, because if if you kind of let go too many hands against him, you're just going to get run over. Uh, but then again, man, this guy is very balanced. He'll go for those big over bets and those small bets, and it doesn't mean that he's only got the bluffs or the nuts. He really is balanced. Well, and of course, won the 2020 Aussie Millions as well. I feel like that's kind of right before offline poker took a break. But that must have been like one of the last proper big international tournaments when everybody could just still uh, travel freely around the world. I was there at those days. I was thinking of trying my luck at the LZ Millions, but I was a day late for uh, the good event. And I was like, well, uh, I'll just uh, reel some of the action and played some cash games back then in Melbourne, which was a lot of fun. Let's take a look at one of the hands that Mr. Burns had uh, on his journey to his second final table. As we had the Queen-7 battling it out with the 7-3 of Jason Kuhn. I have the feeling that this is a hand where you do want to talk about a little bit Nano, so give it us all. Yeah, you can see here, well, I mean, she's opening Queen-7 suited into Jason Kuhn, right? Like, Queen-7 suited, it's not the best hand out there, and especially against an opponent who's obviously very good. But he's like, nah, just because you're good doesn't mean I can't still open into you because, you know, he's fearless, Kale Burns. He's like, open to Queen-7 suited, gets defended by Jason Kuhn, uh, flops top pair, very weak kicker, gets check raised, and it's just like, you know what? Uh, I'm just gonna call you down. I know you're up to a lot of bluffs out here. And then he makes the uh, call against the all in from Jason Kuhn. It is a short stack, but you know, he's just willing to get the battle out there. And that's why we don't see Jason Kuhn at this final table because KO Burns has taken his chips. It's really, if you see the lineup of some of these hand histories, I mean, this was a proper stacked high roller Super Millions as well. It's, it's super cool to see these big names. And then, once again, I'm a bit sad that we didn't get to see Mr. Malinowski make it to the final table. I would have really loved to uh, call some limitless action, but maybe next time. It is awesome to have Kale Burns for the second time and hopefully he sticks around a bit longer this time because last time you gave us kind of the same speech about how amazing he is, top two without a doubt, coming from Australia and then we didn't get to see that much. This time he has a few more chips to work with so hopefully uh, Kale can really run it up and give us a proper show. Let's take a look at our next player. We've got four more players to cover actually, Nano, and the cards go up in eight minutes so we got to speak up a little bit. I believe this is back-to-back -back final tables for this man, Blind Pew. Uh, Arseny, as we referred to him last week, he's here again, and that's pretty impressive, Nana. Yeah, um, I don't really remember much of his performance, but I guess he got eighth place, so that's why. Uh, I guess he came to the final table as a short stack, uh, but you know, back to back final tables, it just happens pretty regularly on our show. Yep, uh, but obviously these are two really impressive ones though, because last week was by far and away the biggest field we had, 900 people. This week we had 362, something like that, runners, so mixed up the number, but among that uh, or around that ballpark. So to, for, to see somebody go back to back in those fields, I mean, that's a bit more impressive than seeing 190 and 195 players and then going back to back. So very well done by Arseny. Let's hope he has a proper run tonight as well. Let's take a look at uh, one of the hands that helped him too get to his uh, second final table and well i feel like this is one of these hands where it's like it's a pretty good run out <laughs> if we can take a look at the hand that arsene hand yes i think they're yep. about so to bring it out. in this hand he uh raises the pocket sixes gets three bet and just shoves it all in uh for about 30 big blinds and definitely not a standard play some guys will let it go just thinking look when you three bet me this small you probably got it but these high stakes guys they don't let any edge go they think they've got the if their opponents have some bluffs and uh the sixes will be a profitable shove um you know 30 big blinds you know i I guess you'd be a little afraid, right? If you got three bet with two sixes, I'm not sure if you'd be shoving. I'd be in, mortified. No, no. I'd be. That's where I tell my stream that I hate my hand, and I feel like the best thing I can hope for is a coin flip that I will end up losing, so I fold. But you know, that's why I don't make any final tables, perhaps. <laughs> it's okay though, right? Uh, <laughs> better safe than. I'm not sure, actually. Yeah, exactly. That's boring. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it is fantastic to see Arsene make back-to-back -back final tables in these big fields. 
and we hope to see some fun hands out of him tonight. Really good job by him. Let's take a look at our third to last player, who I believe uh, we definitely spoke about before as well, more than once even. It's Michael Watson. He has already made two final tables, so this is his third final table. He has cashed way more than that. I mean, Sir Watts, Mad Dog, as I said, his nickname is awesome. I mean, these guys, man, they just keep on uh, reappearing. They keep rebuying, right? They try their best, but he's actually <laughs> had no performances, right? He's got a ninth place and a ninth place of two times. He's been on our final table. Uh, he usually comes in in eighth or ninth. He's in seventh this time, so maybe he can uh, try to outperform his uh, previous performances. Uh, but he's also one of those guys that's been playing for a very long time, similar to West Menlo, uh, Isaac Barron. Well, we can take a look at one of the hands he had on his journey to the final table. Because also, A, the table that he was on looks uh, very feisty. Take a look at his left as well. But he actually was battling it out with one of the other final table lists, Mario Mos Mosbeck. I mean, I'm not exactly sure about the last name. Well, we'll go with Mario. And we can see the Ace-5 just sticking around. And Michael was correct. Yeah, um, I think this is pretty standard from both players. It is a blind versus blind battle. Um... But uh, yeah, not, not too much to say on this one. All right, it's a pretty standard play, and he was just on the right end of it. That means we've got two more players to cover. Next up, Nano, you promise me you behave, okay? Because you, you've been a little mean to him in the past, and I know you went around and eventually said you liked his play. But I remember Nano was losing his cool a little bit, as we are going to take a look at our eighth final table list tonight, and it is good old Chris Fitzgerald. Can take a look yeah, at yeah. his beautiful face. <laughs> just I mean, a reminder. That... Let's remind people why I was giving him a little crap, right? Uh, on July 26th at his final table, he was making so many big folds. He was folding like uh, sevens, eights, nines, and I think tens of super passive pre flop. He was just playing very tight. Um, didn't really like it. And then, uh, you know, he, he did some big bluff uh, and then busted out in fifth. That, that was a really cool one. I think LKS won that. Um, but then he came back to the final table, and actually the next time he was final table, he came as a, one of the bigger stacks, and I really liked his play in that final mm -hmm. table. He was very aggressive. I think, I guess, like, when he's the middle bottom stack, he plays very uh, ICM heavy and try to ladder up, but uh, when he's a big stack, he's a very different player. But today, he's a short stack, so uh, good luck to him today. Yeah, comes in with 15 big, so one double, and it's obviously not that bad, right? We've seen people come into these final tables with six or seven bigs. And that's where it becomes really hard. But let's take a look at the hand that Chris Fitzgerald had real quick. Uh, I want to say that helped him get through this final table. But to be fair, uh, I don't think this hand really helped him. It definitely helped that chip leader. <laughs> Nana, what do you make of this? Well, he's willing to hero call, right? Like he did a check call down with uh, two pair. Uh, there is some flush draws uh, flushes out there and bigger two pair. Uh, he's just willing willing to call down of course but uh yeah like you said this is why the chip leaders got to the chips yeah this one uh worked out very well for rudy uh last but not least we've got one more player to cover before the cards go up in the air which is two minutes from now we're excited hopefully you guys are excited i know free shows are fun but uh, actual poker is of course what everybody wants to see but it is a lot about these guys now this is a very complicated name we're gonna go with jury that last name is hard, definitely not Brazilian, uh, but I believe that he's got a special badge as well. And I'm actually familiar with him because I've had, I've had him on some of my final, or not final tables, <laughs> I was lying there, some of my tournament tables, Nano. No. Uh, Undercover Dren, it's a name that we have spoken about before because he did make it to the final table on June 14th. Back then came in as one of the shortest decks, finished in eighth place. He's back. But this time, he is a two-time WSOP bracelet winner. So he's had a good summer. Yeah, he won the uh, $400 Colossus, right? Like, that, that's a huge field, you know, the, with the Colossus-type tournaments. It was the PLO version. Uh, two-time bracelet winner. Uh, he's a sick crusher. I think he's all, he's just been winning, like, a lot of tournaments online in general lately. Uh, he is a short stack, so he's going to need some work. But, uh, I, of course, if this guy picks up some chips, he's very, very dangerous. All right. He actually does live in Brazil as well. And I he just said that it wasn't it? That's, like, the least Brazilian name I've ever <laughs> seen. Like, that name is ultra-Russian, Polish, Belarusian, you know, something among those lines. It looks Brazilian, though. 
Yeah, he definitely. Okay, you know, obviously last names can come from everywhere. So our Brazilian on the cover, Dren. Let's take a look at one of the hands he had that did uh, allow him to make it to his second final table at the high roller super millions. We've got the eight seven. He betted on the river. It seemed like he didn't get too much action. Nana, what do you make of this real quick before we take a look at our final table? Um, no, not too much. Just try to get your opponent to call next time, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, you know, he had a run so far and also once again, one double up. We've seen people do incredibly well in the, at these final tables while coming in as a short stack. So I'm excited. I think overall, this is a, a pretty fun lineup, right? We've got a couple of very big names in the world of poker. I'm personally very excited for Isaac Baron because I'm actually stunned by the fact that I feel I was a poker fan in 2007, 2008. Uh, but I'm not, it doesn't ring too many bells to me and I haven't seen that much of him, but it's super cool to see that somebody that was like card player of the year in like 2007 or online card player of the year has made it to a final table of our event in 2020. Uh, that makes me really excited. And if you guys wonder, why does Yuri have such a fancy ring around his uh, avatar, his icon? That is because he won a WSOP event and I'm now even more jealous, Nano, that I didn't win one myself. Yeah, no, that's cool. I didn't know that they were, uh, you know, decorating the guys who won, you know, the GG Poker Online WSOP events. And that's really cool uh, because uh, not very many people have that, right? Like, I'm not sure how many events we had this uh, this series, but just what, 30 guys or so. Uh, but, you know, very cool to see. All right. Well, the tournament is going to kick up now. We're going to uh, witness the seat selection a little bit. Obviously, in the beginning, it doesn't matter that much. It's mostly... Uh, it matters what the last three or four players do. Shorter stacks go first, so they don't have that much impact on how this final table will truly look like. But still a little bit of impact. Nano, you know what time it is. I gotta say, last week you owned me. I have enjoyed the part where I made fun of you and you picked somebody and they busted <laughs> immediately. But you're kind of fighting back over here. So who is your pick for tonight? I mean, I know you liked Isaac Barron. That's the guy I'm gonna pick. Isaac Barron has been the guy I've been... Very excited for when I first saw the lobby. He's got a lot of chips. I believe he's still very good. Um, I, I was a fan of him uh, from way back when as well as myself. So uh, that's got to be my pick today. I'm torn a little bit because I obviously uh, was thinking of Isaac Baron as well, but it's a bit boring if I pick the same player as you. So you know what? I'm going to go with somebody that if he does win, you're going to regret that you didn't pick him. I'll go with Cal Burns. I know that you've got some work to do. He's on 3.3 .3 million right now. But if Mr. Burns just get things going, if he is, without a doubt, one of the best two tournament players in Australia right now, I believe he can run this up and take all of it down. Well, I'll tell you this. If you picked first and you picked Isaac Barron, I was going to pick Kale Burns 100%. Um, I'm very <laughs> excited for him. I think he's very, very good. Uh, but let's not take anything away from all these other guys. Um, I'm excited to see Mario play. Uh, you know, he's one of the poker grindhouse. He's one of the guys who sold 90%, right? So he's actually mm -hmm. probably going to have, you know, no jitters or nothing, right? He's going to just try to play his best. He does want to impress his, you know, the people who, who did buy a share of his action, but uh, he's a He's a footballer, right? Uh, yeah, former pro footballer, I believe. Yeah, pro professionally at some point. Uh, so this is cool to see, right? Like uh, seeing these guys transition from another game to this great game of poker. Yeah, I, I looked it up as well when he was at my table. I was like, all right, this is like an influencer streamer, but I didn't know him. And I feel like I know quite a few of the stalker streamers. As Yuri, by the way, could potentially go all in. But I looked it up back then. I was like, I'm not that familiar with him. But apparently he played for... SC Wiener Neustadt, uh, which is either a German or an Austrian team. I should know that, but I don't. Anyway, let's talk about poker. And I uh, don't know all about the smaller teams in Europe, but Yuri opening it up here yeah, under the gun plus one. Ace Queen Student, very standard play. Yeah, I, I do find it a little surprising. He's not open jamming as pretty much mm -hmm. the shortest stack of the tournament with 11 big blinds in early position. But, uh, you know, this guy's a big crusher and. Um, it's just a different strategy, but he is going to let Michael Watson come along here. Uh, but, you know, he, he's not going to lose this pot because uh, and he'd pick up one extra big blind by just min raising. No, no, you've done this. He can't before. lose his pot. He cannot he can lose, lose his pot. pot. He cannot. Three of hearts on the turn. Stop it, no, no. <laughs> What's going to win? Mike Watson's not going to check call here with ace three high. Is he? I mean, this would be absurd. 
<laughs> Michael Watson obviously doesn't have too many chips to play with either. So he's going to let it go. And you're right. Yuri did pick up one extra big blind. So that's a decent start for him. And I do think if he would have shoved, he really wouldn't have gotten much action. Uh, I want to say this can get a little bit feisty. Chris Fitzgerald is obviously one of the shortest stacks, but you don't want to call it off with trees. But I think Isaac Barron will definitely take a look at the flop with his Queen Jack offsuit. Yeah, and I'd be shocked that Chris Fitzgerald shoved threes given that one time I was giving some some crap. Regardless, <laughs> onto this hand, it's the nut flush draw versus the top pair of Isaac Barron. Isaac Barron in, you know, these are one of these hands where you're happy you flop top pair, right? But you're not happy to see the three hearts. It's one of those ones where you just want to check call, please don't bet, please don't bet, but you still kind of like be a little bit sticky. Well. Yes, King. Oh, well, that's an action uh, card on the turn there. As Isaac Baron makes trip jacks, but obviously there's still the not flush draw for Mikolai. What do you think Mikolai is going to do now on the turn? Hmm. It, yeah, I like the check here. It just doesn't seem like his opponent is going to fold too many hands on the turn, right? And then say you're up against like the King of Hearts, right? You're better off checking back yeah. the turn and then calling off a river bet. Betting the turn doesn't really accomplish much. Um, there's still a chance he might pay off this river bet, uh, but it looks like he does get away. All right. I think well done there by Mikolai because that could have ended a whole lot for us. Uh, sometimes we get a little stubborn. We're like, we've got the ace of high, and we're going to make them pay for it because if I've got the ace of high, you know, I can potentially have them not flush, but I think Mikolai lost the bare minimum there. So good to see. Yuri with ace eight. If he comes along, we're flipping. I mean, we are flipping, but only the three cards, right? Like, you want to be flipping with the whole five cards. Um, it is reasonable for him to call here. He's probably not loving it, but it's just the yeah. price is always so good, given we're playing with antis. Um, but Mikolai here, two sevens, this is a not a good board for you. Yeah, he does hold the seven of hearts. He made us look at it. It's like, well, I can always fire in a big blind and a bit extra, and... For Mikolai, that doesn't hurt that much. For Yuri, that's going to hurt a lot more. Is Yuri going to get a little crazy here with his uh, naked one? I doubt it. Um, this is the thing. <laughs> the good thing is when you got this chip stacks and you're fighting against like those 15 and lower big uh, stacks, you can mm -hmm. actually just keep betting the flop of like 1.5 BBs or so, and they just have to fold so much, especially mm -hmm. at final tables where... They don't want to make uh, random check raises or very weak floats uh, because those chips are very important. Well, Arsene is going to pick up his first blinds with the Ace King. Unfortunately for him, absolutely no action. Mikolai with another monster hand. Already had the Ace King. That one didn't really work out for him. This time wakes up with the Jacks under the gun. He's going to open it up. And Mario might get a little crazy here. No, no, this is the first hand Mario will play. When I was playing with him, I feel like he three bet everything. Maybe that's because it was me, but <laughs> let's see what Mario does with well, the Ace-10 suited. Ace-10 suited is, is a tr very tricky hand here, uh, playing from the small blind against under the gun. Uh, but, you know, this is what you want to see, but you want to try to still contain the pot uh, as much as possible. Seems like Cal Burns is chatting a little bit. I'm, yeah, I'm not open. sure what he typed. You go, you go find it for me. You tell me what he I, said. I will let it know. I will let you know. I saw the are we supposed to, but I didn't. I yeah. couldn't catch the rest of it. Um, but while you look it up, we see a continuation bet from the two jacks, and Mario does check call. And uh, it's going to be very, very hard for him to, to lose his hand unless one of those jacks roll off. I don't know if um, I can't read everything because he wrote too much, but it said, are we supposed to see people's TI and then dot, 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 dot. So I don't know what the rest of his message was. Maybe he's talking about the time. Can oh, time bank. Yeah. I'm guessing. Um, he's asking to be called call support. Well, this is not his first final table. So if something is different, he's probably aware of it, right? But we'll figure that one out, guys. We'll let you know. Table. Who knows? <laughs> what? <laughs> On GG, who knows? I'm saying. Oh, I guess this is the second. No, right? he's been here. Yeah, before. he already made a final table of the Super Million. So no, <laughs> I don't think uh, that's happening. We'll let you guys know at home for now. We're just gonna see how the following hands play out, and uh, hopefully, Mr. Burns will be satisfied soon. Rudy, our chip leader, opening up pocket fours under the gun. Yes, you know they don't. They don't. They make sets when people need it. Now, or when it really hurts, but. 
You know, when you're when you're opening under the gun, yeah, that's just not the moment that the fours are gonna come into a set. It just doesn't happen like that. I mean, still a chance a set could come, just maybe on one of those later streets. Uh, well, close, but not quite there. It's actually a fun hand right now, right? Because obviously Mikolai looks at his hand, he's like, well, I've got ace high. Uh, 10 will give me Broadway. Ace or queen could be good. And if you're Rudy, you're just like, maybe I'm good, but it's hard to figure out whether you're truly good or not. I mean, with the board pairing on the river, that's got to be good news for uh, Rudy. Yeah. Um, it's still like, he doesn't feel very good about hands, but he's loving the check, of course. Now he's, he got the showdown value. Um, there was a chance that Mikolai was going to consider bluffing the river. The thing is, ace-queen high is like, it's like the absolute best, uh, you know, unpaired hand. So, you know, They're that, that could have went either way. It could have went either way. Yeah. I, I often feel pretty good when I've got the not nothing. I'm like, yeah, this is like the best of all the hands. It's not a proper hand. Um, it seems like you were right, by the way. The players are definitely talking about the time bank. Like, we can see the time bank, but I think that the players that are playing, for some reason, cannot see the time bank. Mario already let Kyle Burns know that everybody's got 15 minutes, and, you know, we should be <laughs> fine for quite some time. I don't think that's something we truly have to worry about in hand three or four, but I do understand that uh, they want to obviously see how much time there is left for everyone. Yep. Um, Mario does bet here. Two queens, man. What queen would be nasty, wouldn't it? It'd be a horrible hint. <laughs> I mean, so far, Rudy, obviously, king would be good enough for Rudy as well. And a king would definitely slow down the action for Mario, right? Because then it's like, all right, you don't like to see the ace. But oh, it's no, ace it's... And a king. Yeah, that's just not the card you want to see if you're Mario there. Rudy, but it's, it's kind of hard to value bet. I think it's hard yeah. to value bet here. Your opponent often has like the ace fives and stuff like that. Again, especially when you're up against a chip leader, you don't want to be betting uh, multiple streets and getting raised. Uh, Mario's probably like, oh God, what is that card? Yep. Mario disgusted by that river. And the rich get richer as Rudy is our first player to nine to break the 10 million chip barrier. It always feels good when you're chip leader and then you get that final jump across the 10 million as well. This could actually be some trouble for my man Kyle Burns as Mikolai is making it look like it's a very casual race from the button. But he's actually There's sitting on ace king. He's going to call. He's going to call. He oh has to call this while Kale yeah. putting the pressure with two sixes. I like the play in general, um, but he is up against a no. coin flip. Hold, Kale oh. Burns, his tournament life is on the line here, and there is a king on the flop, so that means Burns is drawing to two outs. King on the turn doesn't really change anything. We need a six and a six only. That's not it. Wow, did I just inherit the <laughs> Nano Noko curse over here? What has happened? Oh my goodness. Mr. Burns, last time he made it to the final table, he finished in eighth place. Today he went out in ninth. I like the play as well with the sixes, though, Nano, to be fair, because they do that with anything, right? They do it with Queen Jack, with Queen 10, with Queen 9, King Jack. And if you're then shoving for 3 million, they're never calling you. But yeah, Ace King, they're calling you. Yeah. Um, we'll talk about <laughs> KO in a second. I'm just curious to see if Isaac Barron's. I don't think he's going to call it. There's a lot of chips, it's, uh, 10 more big blinds. It's, it's tough from under the gun versus the big blind. Um, I do like the fold there, but, um, you know, K.O. Burns, uh, I guess he doesn't have to worry about the shot clock anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's just mean, Nano. That's just mean. <laughs> K.O. Burns walks away with $54,000, uh, so obviously not the worst, but he came in with a pretty decent stack, so we're hoping for more. We've got three absolute monsters here in, uh, on the button, in the small blind and the big blind. Nano, this hand is going to be fireworks. Is that just all in, all in call? In. Or maybe Isaac Barron is. gets away. I think it's a three-way all-in coming up because Mike Watson uh, is going to shove worse than Ace Queen suited, and mm -hmm. Isaac Barron's got a lot of chips. He can spew off fifteen big blinds, and it's not really a spew. He he can he can put it in. Mm -hmm. I I just don't see how he uh, how he folds Ace Queen suited. There's no. the call. And he does it. And Chris Fitzgerald's like, what? What do you guys have? But he's obviously hoping for this kind of scenario, right? Ideally, they both have Ace-King. But Ace-King, Ace-Queen is something that does make some sense. And then your jacks are not in the worst shape. So let's so get what, it on. 
what Chris is thinking right now is, should he fold for a ladder? This guy likes no. the ladder, and I see him, right? I wouldn't fold personally because no. I would be going for the win, right? Like, Jax could be crushing. could be up against 10s, 8s, 2 yeah. ace kings, this stuff. But he's definitely no. thinking about – you You remember him folding all those no. hands in. I remember, but no, Chris Fitzgerald will not fold this, okay? I, I do not believe that. I remember that final table where you got a bit upset and he did fold the tens pre-flop really quickly even as well. And it was okay. It was a bit safe. You can't fold Jax here, Chris Fitzgerald. Come on, please. Don't do it. Don't <laughs> do it. It really does look like he's going to fold. Oh, man. No. I mean... I wouldn't be surprised, I see on point of view, it's a fold, but I would have just open shoved myself then if I'm going to fold these two jacks, you know? Like, just put your opponent out. I, I, I can't remember the last time I raised folded 11 big blinds. Pocket jacks on Pocket the Pocket jacks. He folds. No! He fo oh, my goodness. And now the ace king is going to double as well. See, <laughs> I mean, you know, obviously hindsight, you can say like, well, it was a good fold, but. I, I don't like that fold, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't like Isaac it at all. Fair, oh, no, my you, goodness. No, you like it because Isaac Farron no. has runner, runner, flush, Watson out again. Oh, that's, my God. That's being result-oriented, man. <laughs> Mad Dog, again, finishing in eighth place. Michael Watson will walk away with $73,000, but no, Nano, that's not how we reason at this final table. I don't care. It could have been four aces, you know. It could have been quads <laughs> and quads, and I still didn't like the fold. I really feel like the Jack should have gone for it there. That that's a Chris Fitzgerald play, you know. When he's a short stack or a medium stack, he wants to ladder up. When he's a big stack, he wants to punish and try to bluff, but he's not close to a big stack right now. Um, and oh, that that was just a very very big fold. Um, but you it know, is Watson, a big fold, and uh, I, to be honest, I like a little prop yeah. to Watson. You know, he did improve on his two ninth place finishes. He did get eighth place this time, so uh, <laughs> hats off to him. But that's just me now, you know, because he went all in with Ace King against Ace Queen and somehow got eliminated from the tournament. Not exactly his fault, I would say. Yeah, not his fault at all. I have another very not so good from. But yeah, that Jax, man, you're gonna be talking about that one for a while. I feel like that that's a big one. That is a big fold. Yeah, like I I understand it. Let's say, uh, I don't know. No, I I actually I feel like I would just always go for it. And like, the thing is, if the jacks hold there and you trip all up, then all of a sudden you're not thinking about leathering anymore. You're thinking about potentially just shipping the entire tournament, right? Like you're sitting probably at 3.6, 3.8 million, something among those lines. It would have been an absolute monster pot. <laughs> so King Jack did make a fair there. On That's actually a decent pot as well, heading to uh, Mikolai his way with the King Jack uh, of Diamonds. Ah, oh, no, I can't let it go. No, no, he sh should have just yeah. gone for it. I mean, I, I would definitely be going in with the jacks, maybe just open shoving myself. Yeah. I, it just seems a little a little too tight. The thing is, I actually don't think any of these other guys would be folding to two jacks. Uh, but, you know, Chris Fitzgerald gets his game. He's been to the final table three times. Uh, he can play however he likes. It's just, I'm not a fan of it. Uh, but it, it works for him, I guess. Uh, and I guess in hindsight, he's still in the tournament and he can might, might get another page up. Yeah. I mean, to be fair to Chris Fitzgerald, he would have been eliminated otherwise. And now he already made a page jump. He's still in, but Nano Noko, this hand could be some fireworks as well. I feel like we've got no time to chill tonight at all. There is some feisty action at this final table of the super millions. Isaac Baron. Opening up under the gun, pocket queens. Mario is sitting on the ace jack offsuit, and then Arseny is sitting on the ace jack suited. Yeah, um, I like the three bet with the ace jack. I think I think all the other pretty ace jack sixes and threes should will be out of here. And I like the, the re raise because Isaac Barron is you know almost a chip leader who's going to be opening a lot. Ace jack's a good hand to three bet with. You got the ace blocker. Uh, the hand play is decent in case you get called. Uh, in general, I think ace jack here is a three better fold. But oh actually, God. it's a cold four bet. I'm surprised from a guy with only 29 big blinds going for the cold four bet. Actually, though, if you think about it, his read is actually wow. spot on. Wow, the queen's folded. Oh, he my gets, God. He gets Isaac Barron to fold. So we just saw someone in the previous round fold Jack's pre-flop. And now we see Isaac Barron, the man who's second in jigs, 
just fold Queen's preflop. No, 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 go. I've been away for three days. Okay, I've been disconnected from the internet. What has happened to poker? <laughs> yeah, are we playing a brand new game? What's happening? Uh, that is a hand defining moment. Um, if Isaac Barron does not ship this tournament, that's that's going to be the one we're going to be talking about. That is a huge fold, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through it a little bit. What he's thinking, even though it was incorrect. Oh, well, <laughs> actually, he does pick some draws, so we'll get to that in a second. Um, I like Isaac betting here. I think with this hand. You got a lot of weak draws, but it's good enough to get some hands to fold. There's a lot of hands that would fold. Two eights, two sevens, some ace X. The hands of fade. Nikolai is not one of them, though. <laughs> <laughs> that hand ain't folding. I think the important part here is that Mikolai actually checked back this monster of a hand on the flop. Of course, he's up against the chip leader, but when someone checks back this strong of a hand on the flop, you got to always be worried that... Uh, in future streets, if you see this, that he's got flushes or sets or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. Well, Isaac Baron can be very fortunate that he didn't hit one of the cards that he was looking for. Imagine if the river is an eight or something. And that'd be kind of naughty. Uh, fortunately, that didn't happen. But Isaac Baron is betting big on this river. And I can't imagine Mikolai just calling here right now. No, like, I feel like he's going to race. There's a chance... Yeah, the way when you play your hand deceptively by checking back the flop, it does make a lot of sense to go for a raise because people get confused. Uh, mm -hmm. But it looks like he does just call. He's just like, man, you're the chip leader. It, it, it would just re almost a chip leader. It would just really suck if you had it. And, um, but I do think a lot of times you probably should be raising, especially when you play your hands so deceptively on the flop. Uh, all right, Nano. Let's go back. Let's go back to the queens, okay? We'll forget about the jacks. Well done, Chris Fitzgerald. You're still in the wait, tournament. wait, wait. Let's let's talk this hand real fast, real quick. Just because okay. Yuri might be getting it in, oh, he man. should be getting it. I mean, he's been lathering, by the way. On the covered ran, Yuri came in as a shorter stack. He is now top seven already. Can the fives hold? Seems nope. like the answer is no. Well, at least he got that five. bracelet not so long ago, right? Yeah, he's got There's two of no them. five man. coming. Oh, oh there's five there coming. Five. There's the five coming. <laughs> That's how you win WSOP events, baby. Yuri with the double up here. Two million chips right now. Giving us the running hot emoji as well. Let's get it on. I got to say, Rudy's got good emote game too. But yeah, so let's go back to the queens. I need to talk to you about queens. Uh, but I want to say, I don't know if you heard me. I said, there's no five coming. He's out. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah. five comes on a river card. Um, I was going to say, nice fold by Jax for Chris Fitzgerald because he would have got another pay jump. But um, yeah, back to the Queens. <laughs> Even though Mario... Man, there's so much action. Why are they always trying to stop us discussing about these Queens? Uh, it's I all think... about poker tonight, Nana. <laughs> oh okay, God. I like this play. Um, okay, so back to the Queens. He raises the two Queens. Gets three bit by Mario. Uh, but Blind Pew, um, Arsini had... What, 29 big blinds to start the hand. And he actually, he, he format pretty quickly, I believe. Um, yeah. And I think Isaac Barron out-leveled himself really hard because most of the time when someone's got 29 big blinds and they format, especially cold, they're shoving all of the chips in, right? So Isaac Barron's like, is this guy getting greedy with those two aces and two kings? Because if he had eights king, he probably would just jam it in. He's probably like, this is no way... He's cold for betting like a Jack suited, you know? Um, I think Isaac Barron really leveled himself with the way the chip stacks uh, were. And uh, I don't know if I could fold those two queens myself, but uh, he's going. He's not going to feel good about it when he sees it. I actually think Mario's in some trouble here. I actually thought he was going to be in more trouble pre-flop, but maybe he didn't want to get too carried away. Obviously, there's still Chris Fitzgerald, right? Like, we almost forget about him. But he's sitting there on six big blinds. So I think a lot of the other players, they don't really want to make these spots bigger than they have to be. But normally, if you've got pocket nines here against the chip leader who opened under the gun, you're going to feel really good about your pocket nines. You're going to feel really good when your opponent also checks to you on the flop uh, from this position. This is very tricky. Uh... Mario's in very big trouble. The only thing that could save him, really, is if is Chris Fitzgerald, really. I think that very small stack size might get him to just think, maybe I should let go of my two nines. But uh, there's a chance he just commits because 
Rudy's line is very, very non-standard. Under the gun open, check raise. Oh. oh my god. This board is just like, it just keeps getting nicer for nines. Like, I don't like it at all, Nana. This feels like an evil setup. But you're right, there is still Chris Fitzgerald. If Rudy checks here, I think Mario will absolutely check back. Oh, but that is a disgusting bet, man. I feel for Mario. What a what a sick spot this is. Yeah, this is tough because it looks like the chip leader is tr trying to bully you. He's not in this spot. Um, I, I, this is just this is just pure hand uh, reading the player. Uh, you know, it's not a normal line. If Mario gets away. I think he's looking straight at Chris Fitzgerald, who's the big blind really soon. Six and a half big blinds. I think I like the conservative play um, if he does make it, but I wouldn't false him if he does commit. I'm just uh, double checking something real quick, Nano. Yeah, no worries. Um, but he's in a very, very tough spot here. Um, he did sell 90% of his action. So there's a chance he's thinking, look, I've only, I'm only in for 1K. Uh, let, let's just go for it. Uh, but, you know, this is, this is nasty. I, I hate the spot for Mario. I feel disgusted for him. And I do feel the longer you think, the more you start thinking, I'm beat here. But then there's also that little voice in your head. He's like, he's doing this with like ace king, ace queen, and he's trying to be a bully and he's putting pressure on me because there is a short stack at the table, right? Oh, oh he no. makes the call and we can't blame him. But Nana Noka, there's no way there's a nine on there's the river, no right? There's no way because there's only one nine left in the deck and it's not it. That is going to be the end for Mario. Super Mario, our professional football player, or former professional football player, is eliminated in seventh place. Sold 90% of the action using the staking future within the client. Still, I mean, a $10,000 investment into 100K is obviously excellent, uh, but that's just a very unfortunate hand, right? I don't think there's much yeah. to say. It, it just really sucks. Uh... You know, his other option was to fold, to wait for Chris Fitzgerald to get it in, which he's about to get it in. I just want to say Chris Fitzgerald got another pay jump, thanks to those jacks. Yeah. Dude, this, this. Dude, we gave him a hard time, but if he would have called with jacks, he would have walked away with $73,000. And now, uh, or if he would have shoved the jacks, and now he actually walks away with at least $135,000. Didn't Chris Fitzgerald once upon a time also survive for a long time with a short stack? and eventually build up one hell of a stack. Okay, this is actually getting a little interesting. Mm -hmm. So Chris Fitzgerald doesn't shove all in because, you know, in case everyone goes all in, but in the no. <laughs> man, 48k would be crazy. But Yuri just calls. And I, yeah. I, I guess the ace jack to fold behind him. I like the just call because I think the eights can actually let go of his hand if uh, someone else reshoves on him because of okay. the IC and pressure. Oh, what? this is cool. The force. Rudy goes all in with the force. He knows that force will always make a set. So Chris Fitzgerald is in serious trouble. Uh, so far, the force is still good. Chris Fitzgerald needs an ace or a king only on the river, or he will be eliminated. And that is wow. no pain. Force do not make a set, but they do hold, Nano. That, that is wild because that is such good hand reading from Rudy. I think he just knows that if Yuri had a hand, he would just reshove it, right? Because because we're at a final table with big pay jumps. He got Yuri to fold the best hand, two eights, and the eights would have held. If Yuri had reshoved like a lot of people would do, mm -hmm. he would have more chips, and Chris Fitzgerald would still be busted out. Uh, there's, this final table has a lot of interesting pre-flop and post-flop decisions so far that has not gone the standard way that we're used to seeing in our previous episodes. We're also losing players a whole lot quicker than we normally do now. Now, I remember that we had like one final table where I think after one hour of play, we still had eight out of nine. And normally it's just kind of a slow start. People are trying to ladder and people have tried to ladder here. It's just people are getting set up left, right and center. <laughs> then we have some unfortunate runouts as well. And after 30 minutes of poker, we're down to five. Yeah, it's very quick, um, and a lot of people have been making the incorrect fold pre-flop uh, so far. 
Uh, you know, right now we have three guys with so many chips. Uh, yes, we've lost a lot of players pretty quickly, um, but if we lose Yuri soon and possibly Blind Pew, d this is going to... It's going to be a real battle, and it could take a really long time. But, of course, these guys are not shy for big pots, uh, so it could go very quickly, too. Let's see what happens in this hand if Isaac Baron wants to get a little crazy. He decides to let go of the a Deuce offsuit, and that's not a uh, bad play. I feel like Mikolai has been very quietly gaining a whole bunch of chips as well. Uh, yeah, he decided to find a table with like four point something, and he's at eight point eight million right now. I think he's been the most involved. Uh, he did get a lot of chips with that Jack Ten suited when he played a trick. He got Isaac Barron to uh, bluff into him, mm -hmm. uh, but you no, know, he's been having a, a really nice run. Uh, given I don't think he's had any big clashes, just been playing some post slot spots and winning. Take a look. Uh, I came in with four point eight million, but hey, after sitting. Uh, after starting with 4.8 and being at 8.8, 30 minutes into the final table, and seeing four players get eliminated already, you're probably going to feel very good. And same can be said, of course, for Rudy, who is sitting at 13.3 right now. And that's by far and away the most amount of chips anybody has had this evening. I feel like we're just blazing through this final table. Like, well, where are the tough spots? No, no, you know, I know we just had one for Mario, but, you know, that one then too just ended immediately. I feel like it's going so fast. Well, it's because everyone's playing like a nit pre-flop, you know? <laughs> like, everyone's just folding, 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 folding. Um, regardless, this hand is Yuri actually raised the small blind with 9-7 offsuit. Checks the flop, even though he flopped double gutted. Is now betting the turn. Blind Pew's got third pair. Uh, it's a, this is a tough spot, actually. I mean, Blind Pew did make an insane play already when he called four bet the ace-jack suited and got queens to fold. Once again, Blind Pew has uh, not just made back-to-back -back final tables, but he made back-to-back -back final tables in the two biggest fields we've had so far at the High Roller Super Million. This is one hand of hand as well. Sevens against stands between the two biggest stacks at the table. But this board may slow the action down a little bit. Yeah, it does go check-check on the flop. Uh, Mikolai probably likes his hand a reasonable amount. Not loving it, but it's got enough to play at least uh, for one bet on some street. Is going to be the one betting himself. Uh, my expectation is that Rudy will call here and it will just go check, check on the river a lot of times. But there's a chance that Rudy throws a little bit of chips if it gets checked to him. Mm, might feel decent here about his stance. Obviously, it blocks a lot of the potential straight, so you're not worried about that. If he was worried about a jack, I don't think he's worried about it too much at the river. So he's going to fire one bet forward. And I do kind of like it, right? Because if you're sevens right now, you're like, hmm, you know, maybe we'll just take this down. We'll beat the ace five, the ace uh, seven, the ace four, ace yeah. deuce, even a king queen. <laughs> a king Which queen is a big play. one, right? King queen of yeah. one club. It's very reasonable for him to check back the flop call, small turn bet. Uh, I think the sevens is in a very tough spot here. And this is a very good value bet from Rudy. I think he was deciding, okay, how often am I up against a jack, a nine mm -hmm. or eight? And I think the truth is he's probably not up against a jack too often because his opponent probably would just keep betting the river. You saw that? You were just folded pocket trees. Uh, 18 bigs, doesn't want to even get involved. Yeah, I think Yuri is a, he's very selective about how he plays his hand. I mean, we had, I don't know if you remember, not too long ago, he followed those two eights against the two fours of Rudy who knocked out Chris. I mean, that's all, that's all. There's been a lot of very interesting pre-flops and in, uh, situations, right? Yeah. yeah. To go back to that hand a little bit, it was funny as well because the fours open, but that was not a regular open, right? That was like an uh, X4.3. No, no, no. Open. Actually, what happened in that hand was... No, Chris not the fours. Sorry, Gerald. the ace-king yeah. uh, opened. Yeah, but like he didn't go all in. But it wasn't a regular race either. He he raced it like uh, four and a half times the big blind. And Yuri did call. It is kind of weird to see somebody call four and a half bigs, but then fall to the shelf of Rudy, right? Yeah. I think in that, I remember in that hand, Yuri actually took a while to call the four big blind raise. Mm -hmm. And maybe that was a timing tell that Rudy picked up on. Uh, because if you had aces, kings, right? Or, you know, even ace, king, like, 
you may take some time, but I don't think you need to take as long, much time as he did. So I think uh, it's just a very good read on Rudy. I mean, Rudy might have even known that Yuri has a hand like five, six, or seven, or eights, right? And uh, was like, I know he's going to fold those hands, and if he's going to call off with like ace, king, ace, well, ace, queen, then, you know, I'm still flipping against it. It was just, it was very impressive. The Baron is going to feel relatively good about his hand here. 2.1 million in the middle. But how much can I get? How much should I bet? That I can get paid off for? I think 1.2 is a bit too much. I don't really see Rudy paying 1.2 million here. I mean, I don't really think there's any reason for Rudy to get too out of line here. And the stock price is somewhat. So I think Baron will win a decent pot. And he goes back to 8.7 million. It seems like my voice is like. Okay, I'm going to disconnect from the call real quick, okay? Yeah, so Rudy's going to open up here on the button uh, as uh, my co-host fixes his audio. Uh, anyways, Yuri's got king six offsuit. Definitely a hand he can consider defending with. He's got 17 big blinds. They're actually going to three bet it. Wow. Okay, this is uh, very aggressive. It's the king six. The, he blocks the kings. Which is actually very important. Uh, you know, you block ace king and king queens, hands that want to kind of go for it. It's just a little bit, also a little bit suspicious that he's just three betting and not re jamming from the big blind against the button. And Rudy, wow, reshoves the ace deuce offsuit. This is just an incredible read. Rudy is really picked up on Yuri's game, knows how he plays exactly because he's crushing him so hard right now. Like, so, so, so hard. That, that was just such a sick play. Uh, <laughs> and and Kevin, missed, Kevin, you missed that one. Wow. No. What happened? Can you so, hear me, by the way? I can hear you just fine. Um, Rudy min raises the button with ace deuce offsuit. Hmm. Yuri's got 17 big blinds. He three bets king six offsuit to 550,000 with 1.7 million. And Rudy shoves on him with ace deuce offsuit correctly. And he's just been nailing Yuri really hard. Like he's got him to fold the two aids. He knows his three bet was suspicious that he didn't just jam. Uh, it's just very nice. Uh, Rudy's very, very good at reading uh, Yuri right now. And uh, the thing is, Yuri's probably thinking like he's been making some great plays, uh, but he's been incorrect both of those times. I am, uh, sorry, I'm just trying to fix my settings. I have no idea what's wrong because I'm in the same settings as always. Sounds good to is, me. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, we're going to try one more time. I'm really sorry about this, guys. Obviously, technology is weird and sometimes these things just happen. Uh, it seems to be good sometimes and then suddenly it goes quiet, but, you know, none of these things should happen. Oh, yeah. It's stressing me out a little bit, but fingers That's crossed that everything. Yeah, fingers crossed that everything stays fine now. Take a look at it again at the break. I have to admit, I kind of missed the story as well. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> you want to hear it again? I'll tell you again. Okay. TLDR. Rudy yeah. the, the quick one. Rudy raises, mid raises the button. Ace, deuce, offsuit. Yuri three bets the big blind with king six offsuit with only 17 big blinds. He made it 550,000 with 1.7 million total. And Rudy read into it and jammed on him with ace, deuce correctly. Uh, I'm just saying Rudy's been crushing Yuri really hard, right? Because he shoved the two. He just reads. So the thing is, you're a tournament pro, uh, but you're up against other tournament pros who knows these little tricks where, you know, try to make your hand look like aces. But people, you know, that's, that stuff only works on Isaac Barron, right? Isaac Barron folding two queens, but you can't do it to anybody else. <laughs> Well, that's, uh, that's good news for you, uh, Rudy. I do think it's always a bit of an unfair fight. I mean, obviously, the guy with 14 million chips can make some proper plays on guys with like 1.3, 1.4 million chips. I feel like for Yuri, shoving is scary, but it's often just like the best thing you can do. Now, this hand can get a little feisty as well. Oh, no, 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 Cole. Isaac Baron makes the wheel, and Yuri is in a bit of trouble. Yeah. Um... I think Yuri's in very big trouble because Isaac Barron just limped a small blind with 10 big blind effective stack. Yuri's going to think that Isaac Barron would just open jam any ace uh, preflop, which he probably should do and will do 
The only hand I think he's worried about is pocket aces, and we know how unlikely that is. So Isaac going for max value, just jamming. He knows that he, he doesn't have an ace too often, and Yuri might read into it and make the hero call. Obviously, if Yuri makes the call, he will be eliminated in fifth place. The ace, can it save him? I mean, it's so tough, right? Because even if you fall, I mean, what do you have left? You look at the stacks around you. It's not that somebody is really within striking distance from him. If he falls here, even a double doesn't do much for him. He needs to double twice to really that's, make some serious progress. That's definitely going through his mind. It's like, well, if I fold here, what am I left with? And the thing is, he underrepresented his hand. He, rep he checked back pre-flop, so he definitely doesn't have an ace. You check back the flop. It doesn't look like he's got a jack. It looks like he's got a deuce or a three or maybe some spades. Uh, his hand looks very weak. And when your hand looks very weak and you put it, your opponent puts you in for all the chips, sometimes you make the call because, you know, it's very easy to bluff you off the hand. You can see Yuri is deep in the tank. He needs to fold to keep his tournament hopes and dreams alive. But if he falls, he's left with nine on a thousand chips. That's going through his mind right now. If he does make the call, he will be eliminated in fifth place and walk away with one hundred and eighty-five thousand dollars. Not bad. Well, he does wow. make the correct fall. That is honestly impressive. I'm starting to see why this man has won a couple of WSOP events. He's a survivor, right? Like he just, just can't get rid of him. Uh, but you know, like Good th I'm glad he folded because, you know, he's been making the wrong play uh, throughout this final table so far. Uh, finally got one right. Isaac Baron wakes up at ace-queen in the next orbit. Let's see if he can get something done. I still can't believe Isaac Baron folded queen's preflop. Yeah, I thought somebody true. folding jack's preflop was the wildest thing I was going to see today. And then Isaac Baron is like, no, no. He's not going to be happy I'm, when he sees that, but he's still doing more than fine, right? He's sitting at 9 million chips, so none of, of that course. truly I'm, matters. I'm wondering which one is crazier, do you think? The two queens or the two jacks? I think the two jacks is crazier. The two queens, I can kind of understand, you know, like, it, it is very scary when some 30 big blind guy just cold four bets, not all in, and it's like under the gun versus middle position versus late position. So I can kind of get behind it. I'm not sure if I would still fold the two queens myself, but I feel like the two jacks was a crazier fold because the guy had 11 big blinds and could have been crushing really hard in that spot. The thing is, Isaac Baron did have him uh, dominated as well, chip-wise. I don't know. They're both crazy, folding... right? Yeah, they're both pretty crazy. All right. See that Rudy takes down another pot as he just casually flopped the king high flush draw. I once again apologize, guys, for the little technical inconvenience on my side. It's so weird because my settings haven't changed. I streamed today. Everything was fine. Yuri is all in with ace-king, and Rudy might call him with ace-jack. Rudy does make the call. Can Yuri double up? Can ace-king hold? Will that be a move? Just one so time. Oh, <laughs> nope. nope. That's the dream card for Yuri there, drawing that on the turn. Yuri is, and that means that on the covered ran, also known as Yuri, <laughs> it's back to 1.7 million. Gives I've us never the seen not that sure. One. If. I've never no. seen that version of not sure if. Who is that? Is Danny on the ground enough? Was it? I I, I didn't oh I never I've never seen it before. I guess it was Daniel, but it was just like I yeah. I've never seen that emote used. Uh I usually see the not yeah, sure either. if with the with the other one. Yeah, because the regular not sure if is so good that it's there's like no reason not to use it. Uh, anyways, next hand, Isaac Baron, Queen 10, doesn't really flop anything. And Rudy just casually flopped the King High Flush draw, now flops uh, top and bottom pair. He's playing well, Nano, but he's also running pretty good. Yeah, I do think Rudy is playing the best uh, so far at this final table. I've been very impressed with his pre-flop play. His reads have been spot on uh, multiple times against Yuri. Uh, I think he's playing very, very good. Isaac Barron's playing pretty good too, but you know, that Queens is, I, I'm not sure. But look, he's flatting the two aces. She's trying to trap the two short stacks with the two aces. I like the play because let's just say Isaac Barron three bets. Nikolai hasn't been crazy. He's not going to just get it all in with two jacks or like, you know, ace queen or something. So I think you have more value in trying to trap one of these short stacks uh, 
because of how deep they are. If they were playing like 30, 40 big blinds deep, I, oh. I probably would just three bet. That moment when you slow play aces and you do make the not flush on the turn. That's when life is pretty good. Mikolai is going to check. He's like, well, made a pair of tens, but it's uh, not super likely my pair of tens is good here. He's hoping it's good. But I think if Mikolai is a wise man, he just lets this one go. You know, in PLL, if you're not drawing to the nuts, Nano, you let it go because it's not going anywhere. I think Mikolai knows that it's time to let this one go. Yeah, I, I'd be very, very shocked. Like, what? I don't even know what hand he beats. Like, uh, two sixes that <laughs> turn his hand into a bluff. A very, very unlikely. So, uh, correct lay down there. Isaac Baron wakes up with Ace Jack offsuit in the following round. Might start feeling like he's in the winning mood, so he might just continue uh, some feisty plays. And there we go. Fires in the three bet. What will Rudy do with the force? A magical hand in poker. Oh, he yeah, lets it go. go. Big mistake, Nano. Big mistake. <laughs> There's only one four left in the deck, though, so it's pretty hard to hit that set, but still possible. Flop, Flop would have been ace, ace, four, I'll guarantee you. <laughs> Uh, but uh you know ace jack is the three betting hand today right like uh and the cold four betting it's working i mean it might just be the better way to play ace jack uh, you know just calling off with ace jack and then missing the board or then sometimes still being out kicked it's a bit on uh unfortunate we've got two mediocre hands going up against each other here obviously the 10 9 is a bit better and does flop a whole lot better here on the monotone diamond board yeah, um, yeah, I do think Ace Jack uh, offsuit is probably better for a three better fold in general. Like, you want to have some three better bluffs, Ace Jack's like the best candidate because it's like not good enough to get it in, but you know, mm -hmm. strong enough to still play post flop. But Ace Jack suited, I might just call. I think it has a lot more playability. Well, Rudy made the <laughs> chose the wrong moment as he just three axed it from the small blind to the big blind, Isaac Baron. But Isaac Baron wakes up with Ace-King. That is a perfect moment to do so, because that wasn't even a regular race, right? We see a lot of uh, two X, none of that, really going for the three X. And I think this is the ultimate example of why you often see slightly smaller races, because if they have it, they'll go crazy anyway. Yeah. Uh, it does make sense for him to go for the bigger raise anyways, though, because he's up against a very big stack out of position, you try to de-incentivize your opponent from calling. But of course, you risk more, and that's that's the con. Um, but, you know, it's okay. Just throw in some big blinds. You got, he's got over 100 big blinds, so 115. Just keep raising and let these short stacks try to wait it out. And you can see Yuri has been trying to kind of ladder up a bit. Uh, so I, I think you can, you can get away with a lot of raises. But blind pew, two pair. <laughs> the dogs are gonna fire on this one. It's like, let's hope everybody missed. That's not happening. The man with back to back final table still going strong is going for the check race here on the flop. And Arsene is just gonna take this down once again. Incredibly impressive achievement already, man. A field of 900 and a field of 352. And Blind Peel makes back to back final tables. There are that's uh, that's not something I would have predicted, Nano. I know that we see it with some of the regular weeks, but last week was such a crazy big addition. I did not necessarily expect to see the same faces as last week, but Arsene yeah. has proved us wrong, and he's going to shove the nines here as well. I love it. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, it's, it's much more impressive, especially with the field size being bigger. Um, and we're paying a lot more for first place, 636000 Um yeah, hats off to him. He's playing really solid, but you know, he, he his plays and timing is really good. And uh, most notable, I mean, I, I guess his timing wasn't necessarily good, but it was a good read of the ace jack suited. He did get the queens to fold, but in that hand, he was actually trying to get Mario to fold, and he did have a good read that Mario did not have a good hand uh, willing to commit uh, when he did that cold four bet. Rudy does not fire in the race this time, but he does. Oh my goodness. What a, what a little hand. Just limp against a check. And all of a sudden, we've got two pretty big hands going up against each other. Rudy with the trips. Isaac Baron makes top pair. Expect him to at least call here. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think call is a standard play. Maybe raising is reasonable, and he is going to go for a raise and kind of retake control. 
I'm curious to see how Rudy plays the queen six. Um, does call, and the king is not what you want to see for Isaac Baron, right? Because usually you're like, oh, if I get called here, like my opponent could easily have a flush draw, a six, a better nine, maybe an ace king. So it does go check, check on the turn. And Rudy is now trying to figure out if he should bet or check. But I think he knows that if he checks, there is a very good chance that Isaac Baron will just check back. So I think he's going to fire in the bet. He overbets the pot. Oh, feisty Nano. Yeah, um, he's trying to just represent like 10 8, 7 8, basically every single straight draw. Put Isaac Baron in a tough spot. And uh, it's like a very strong hand or nothing. Often, this is the case of it's going to be trip sixes. And Isaac, he's pretty good at hand reading. Uh, it is very reasonable for him to be behind here. He's just trying to wonder, would his opponent go for value this way? Try to decide what this overbet means. Yeah. Isaac fold. Baron does make the correct fold. Well, makes sense, I, I think, to some degree. Of course, it's one of those boards and runouts that you can be like, man, he could be bluffing me here. But I think sometimes your hands are just tied. There's not too much you can do. And this could be some trouble for Arseny. Has he just, wow, he limps under the gun. What do we make of that now? Uh, he's just trying to not get action from all the big stacks. Um, yeah, he doesn't want to raise, get three bet, uh, but still want to play his hand so he can raise a uh, limp call. But I'm curious to see what he does here at the king-queen because king-queen can easily be the best hand sometimes. Oh, not best hand, flipping, right? Like, Mm -hmm. He should be up against every pocket pair. Um, he isn't ahead this time. It's nine more big blinds. This is, it's a tough spot. I think you can fold now because Isaac Baron tagged along for the right. I think if Isaac isn't in, I think you can try to talk yourself into a call and be like, well, I could be flipping here or maybe in an insane world I'm actually ahead, but that's not that likely. But with Isaac still behind you, I think it becomes a bit tricky, right? Because what if you call, but then Isaac Baron shelves? Do you then have right. to all of a sudden call like 30 bigs with King Queen offsuit? Like nobody wants to do that. Yeah, and we know we saw that happen with Rudy, right? Like he reshoved and got the the little eights to fold. Um, mm -hmm. Look at Isaac, just three bet into ace 10. Very solid player. I think the way Isaac Baron plays is, uh, you know, he's got very good timing and I think he has a pretty good image. He's not like a crazy player, uh, so he can get away with these three bets here and there. Well, Ace Queen offsuit is going to open on the gun. Gets called by King Eight, and that's quite a flop. Obviously, really makes top pair, but there is a flush draw on board for Mikolai, and Mikolai's been hitting some turns and rivers as well tonight, Nano. So, what about the Queen of Clubs on the turn? <laughs> that would be very bad. It Anyways, even if he hits any club, though, it'd still be bad for Rudy, right? Ace-Queen is going to be a strong hand on ace-high board. Oh, that's a, that's a good one, right? Like, it's like, you pick up some more outs, but you're out of position. Well, what do you do? I think you can just check here if you make a lie. I think I'd, I'd go for the check call, personally. I mean, he is a PLO player, and PLO players do like to bet their draw, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. The check raise would be real nasty. The only problem is you got so many chips and these there's some guys with some short chips. Mm -hmm. And obviously at this point, the pay jumps do get bigger and bigger. And once again, I mean, obviously it's not as crazy as last week, but this is the second biggest prize pool we've had with the 352 entries. So these pay jumps are starting to get real big at like top four, top three. Does make the call with the king. A hey, the makes a pair of kings on the river. But I think Mikolai knows that that is most likely not going to be good enough. Yeah, it, it, it is. You can definitely have the best hand, but not for calling. More like to check down and just uh, show it down. Uh, Rudy is going to just play it safe. And I think that seems fine, given how deep they are. Mm -hmm. A nice spot for Rudy. Yep. He was the first player to break the 10 million chip barrier. Now he's the first one to break the 15 million chip barrier. As uh, Mikolai loses a lot of the chips he worked for so hard, just limps here with a7 suited. I really does, do have the feeling that he indeed does not want to play big pots with Rudy. 
And he's like, when Arsene is still sitting there with 3 million and Yuri is still sitting there at the bottom side of the table with 1.4, let's not get too carried away here with all these mediocre hands. I think you're exactly right about that. Um, because you got to remember, remember when he had Jack-10 suited against Isaac Bear and he checked back the pair in the flush draw, which was a monster flop? I think the main reason was because they both have very big stacks. He just wants to avoid any chance that they uh, could get it all in. Uh, because it would be a disaster for him to bust out before Yuri and maybe Blind Pew. Uh, so he, right now, I think Mikolai is just going to play really solid. He's still going to play his hands and not play overly tight, but he's going to choose lines that get him to show down uh, cheaply. Okay, I think I found the uh, what was wrong with my audio, by the way. I sound correct right now, right? You can hear me fine. I'm of course, quiet. Yep. All right, so I think I know what it was, and I have just turned it off. I have no idea how that was magically turned on, but I think we should be good, and that makes me so much more relaxed, because now if there is one thing that truly stresses me out, it's tech issues. Like, I'm a nerd. I've been playing StarCraft and WarCraft professionally for, like, 15 years, and I know all about it. I know how to use computers. I don't know how to fix issues, and they stress me out, and they distract me, but I think we're good right now. So we can just enjoy the poker action. Seems like... Uh, so so you stop you hands? stop dragging the the volume up and down that's what you did but basically but that was done automatically so uh, and i have no idea why but i do re i do suddenly remember that there was a weird audio update and maybe that just decided to change some of my audio settings so i fixed it before the break well guys this was quite the uh the tornado in the beginning of the tournament, I don't really know what happened. Kel Burns came in with a lot of big blinds, but he busted relatively early. Made a cool move with the sixes, which we normally would applaud him for. Just this time he got called by Ace King and the sixes did not hold. After that, Michael Watson, unfortunately, once again, got eliminated in eighth place. And after that, we had a couple fun ends. I mean, Mario Mosbeck was really put to the test with the pocket nines. It was a beautiful board for the nines, but it wasn't meant to be for Mario. And then eventually, we did finally see Chris Fitzgerald bust. But to be fair, if he would have done what I wanted him to do with the Jacks, he would have busted in 8th place, so he did level up. Uh, hopefully, you guys are enjoying the action so far. It is once again uh, just a, a really big feel that we had this Sunday. 352 entries. As you guys can see, there is still a lot to play for. If you're not following this Twitch channel yet, make sure to do it, because we've got a lot more poker to bring your way. For now, Nanonoko is going to take a break. I'm going to take a break as well so I can get rid of all the stress that this stupid audio issue brought up to me. And in a couple of minutes, we'll be back to continue the coverage of the 14th edition of a final table of the High Roller Super Millions played over at GG Pokemon.
Alrighty guys, as you can see, one minute and ten seconds to go till we continue. I'm back. I believe Nano Noko is back as well. Nano, we've lost four, five are left. I think it's safe to say that you're most impressed so far by the way that Rudy has been playing, correct? Yeah, I definitely agree with you. He's been making really good pre-flop decisions against Yuri specifically. Um, Isaac Baron has been playing pretty good as well, uh, besides mm -hmm. the two queens, which is a bit tight, but uh, he's got more chips. It's just all the short stacks are, are out, you know, and um, Kale Burns, your pick, busted first, and he had 31 big blinds uh, to start the tournament. And he was, remember, he was worried about, hey, I can't see the shot clock or something, and well, yeah. Yeah, he can't see it anymore either. <laughs> Four minutes into the tournament, like I do understand, you know, after an hour, if there's no shot clock, I think it's nice to know how much time people have left, but probably not something you should be too concerned over, like four minutes into the final table. Uh, well, yeah, we don't have to worry about that anymore. We see it. Hopefully, the rest of the players can see it now as well. You know, it's funny because before the actual continues, I remember watching a Doc Pork video a long time ago where he was talking about one of the runs he had in a tournament. And he said, it's a cold day in hell before I fold pocket jacks pre-flop. And I just like, I very specifically remember that quote. And now we just saw somebody fold queens. And I was like, all right. Well, let's take a look at this hand because in the first hand after the break, Yuri wakes up with aces. And that is one hell of a moment. Um, what do you do here? Okay, he calls. Yeah. All right. I like it. Actually, I like play. it a lot. Uh, because with 10 big blinds, the chip leader is going to open into you a lot. He's just going to have a lot of hands that are going to raise fold. Uh, mm -hmm. You're better off trying to find a way to pick up chips and that's just by calling. And he might just be able to do that, right? Rudy did make a middle pair or second pair at this point uh, as we're on the turn. And if you rebats here, there is a good chance that Jack-10 will at least call one more street. Obviously, it's dangerous because Jack-10 could improve and then all of a sudden your aces could be cracked. And you're out of the tournament, but you want to start making some proper chips here. The runout is, is almost perfect for Yuri, I'd say. I think there is a good chance he will get a few more chips here on the river. Yeah, um, yeah, I think they think he should be probably jamming usually. Uh, he maybe he'll go for like a five to six hundred K bet, but you're almost all in, so it doesn't really make that much sense. Uh, 300 K, I would bet 300. Oh, yeah, so he's gonna bet, try to try to entice his opponent a little bit more, give him a, a good price. And Rudy's in a tough spot. Um, it's just when you check back. You look like you got mid pair. You got mid pair, and sometimes you got to call down just because otherwise you're just folding too much. He's trying to think how often Yuri will actually make this play as a bluff. There are a lot of hands he beats. Pretty much any diamond draw, uh, any straight draw. And they would play definitely to turn this way. The question he's asking, do would those hands keep betting on the wow. paired eight? And he thinks yes, but he's wrong. Very, very well done by Yuri, previously known as Undercover Dren. He's really been finding his way back up now. No? Like at one point, he was at 800, 900k. Uh, he had that tough decision, right, with that pair of jacks on the river when his opponent put him all in. I think it was Isaac Baron back then who had the wheel. Uh, he made the correct fold, and now he's back at 2.6 million. Sure, he's still the shortest stack at his table, but that's already one hell of a comeback. Yeah, and uh, you know, the vibe I'm getting ever since he's got those chips is going to be a bit grindy. Um, a lot of guys have been kind of just taking it post-flop, uh, but keeping the pot small. You know, like Mikolai, uh, Isaac Barron has been, you know, being a little tight in some spots as well. I, I think uh, we're in for a long one right now uh, as these guys try to battle out, see who if one of these short stacks will get shorter. But they're not that short anymore. They got 20 to 25 big blinds. That's fine by me, because it felt that the start of this final table was a true whirlwind. People just kept getting out, uh, knocked out left and right. We lost four players in like 25 minutes. I was like, well, this could be our shortest show ever. And that's obviously not what we're hoping for, because we are here to watch some uh, proper poker. And I mean, these guys are playing for a lot. There are plenty of times first place was 400, 440K. That's second place right now, Nano. First place is over half a million dollars. Uh, I mean, that's when we want to see some proper post-flop play as well, right? Yeah, and this is some proper post-flop. It's a lead with the two fives on the turn queen, which is very, very interesting. Just trying to take control of the pot. Uh, but uh, 
the fives should be winning because Isaac Barron's going to think the ace high uh, has got way too much showdown value to turn his hand to a bluff usually. We'll see what Yuri decides to do here. But on this kind of a board, he got to feel pretty good. He might have been thinking about, I could get some value out of an ace high, right? Because I feel like a lot of the ace highs, especially big stacks, are definitely willing to call one or two big blinds on the board like this. I know that whenever I'm sitting on ace high on a board like this, I'm like, ah, they're trying to get me off a chop. <laughs> Nobody's getting me off a chop. No, no, I'm going to defend my chop. So, uh, but he decides not to go for it. And we can't really blame him for it because if you do bad and then all of a sudden your opponent puts you all in, you're in a pretty miserable spot. And sometimes it's better to avoid those situations. Yeah. Uh, so Yuri, um, you know, he did win a bracelet uh, this month already. Uh, he's a two-time bracelet winner. He's got the special gold around his avatar. So uh, he, he's getting it done. You know, he plays actually very differently than a lot of these guys. And uh, it's very cool and refreshing to see someone, you know, creative lines, uh, both pre-flop and post-flop. You know, um, apparently... Rudy Redloss was on one hell of a heater while he was playing this event on a Sunday because apparently he took first place in a 3k buy in event as well for 112k and he took second in a 5k for 54k. Now, all of obviously, both those scores will be dwarfed if he makes top two in this tournament, but those are the kinds of runs that just make you feel really good about your game. Yeah, and then like. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, he came to the final table as the chip leader, has been playing, I think, the best so far, and has been cruising. Uh, these these guys from Germany are just, just always the biggest crushers, right? Like, if you're from Germany, you have a, a much higher chance of success in poker, I feel like. Germany and Austria, right? It used to be, I feel like it used to be Scandinavia, and, uh, like, 10, 12 mm -hmm. years later, it's apparently it's a lot better to be German and, or Austrian, <laughs> and then you'll be crossing. Isaac Baron here with his ace eight suited doesn't really flop anything. Meanwhile, Rudy flops top pair with his nine five suited. Yeah, Isaac's been uh, taking a lot of post flop from a small blind against Rudy because he knows Rudy's gonna open a lot, and Isaac doesn't want to play three bet pots this deep out of position. So while normally hands like queen ten offsuit ace eight suited are kind of like three bet or fold spots. Uh, Isaac Barron just still getting involved just because he doesn't want to let the chip leader get away with opening too loose, uh, too liberally. But, you know, when you do play passively pre-flop, you let your opponent flop uh, with 9-5 and stuff like that. I don't think Arsene is going to let Yuri get away with this one. I'm expecting him to either three bet or all in. Well, this is going to be the three bets. And Yuri is like, man. Why does this always happen when I try to make a good old move with 7-5 suited in the small blind? Yeah, it, it seems like he's been involved in some small blind versus big blind spots against blind pew, but blind pew has always uh, kind of got the best of him a bit. Uh, you're already picking up two aces again. Again, yeah. That's the second pair of aces in eight minutes. <laughs> you love to see it at the final table of a high roll of super millions. Arsene has been making moves, but I also feel like he's been very good at avoiding troublesome situations. And, you know, here with ace deuce, obviously not a great hand, but every now and then, if you feel like your opponent is raising with nothing, you could have gone for it. Gets out of the way, so Yuri doesn't get any action on his aces this time. A lot of uh, playable hands here. 7-8 suited, king-queen, and jack-9 suited. Should be three-way coming up. I highly doubt we're going to see a diamond flush with five diamonds in these three <laughs> hands, but anything is possible, I guess. I actually really like King Queen in, uh, in situations like this. Ooh, like King so Queen gets the best of it. Well, apparently Mikolai does too. <laughs> I I like it because he's been playing really solid and tight. King Queen's a good hand to three bet bluff with, especially when you got a good image. You block a lot of hands. Mm -hmm. uh, it. It could easily get it done here. 7-8 suited is a pretty playable hand, but your opponent hasn't been out of line. I, I like the laydown. All of it makes sense. As we have a... Uh, well, we have two weak aces and a strong ace in the big blind. We'll keep a close eye on it. As Mikolai does decide to race... All right, damn it. I wanted to talk about something real quick, but we'll talk over here. We'll talk about it after this hand is done. As ace-10 is still in the lead, but neither, really, neither player really flops a whole lot. Yeah, I... Probably not 
too shouldn't be too big of it. it looks like a bet check call kind of spot check 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 you know um not a really expecting these guys to turn their hands into blocks. But what what is your story? Well, it's not much of a story. I just want to give a shout out to the GG Small Stake series that is happening from September 12th to September 27th. Uh, this is something where you probably see good old Roddy have a couple runs as well. <laughs> Obviously, WSOP was super awesome, but a lot of those events are, of course, you know, at the higher end of the buy-ins. Uh, but I know that a lot of people enjoy playing just some poker on this side. Not everybody can be a full-time grinder. So there's a lot of various tournaments, you know, from $2.50 buy-ins all the way up to 150 bucks. Obviously, the fields will be kind of big in those kinds of tournaments as well. So that's really fun, and I definitely do think that if you are, you know, a part-time poker player, you just want to have a couple fun runs. If you want to knock out Roddy a couple times, uh, make sure to check it out. Obviously, all of it played over at GG Poker. But yeah, that's happening for basically the next two weeks. And I think that kind of stuff is really fun as well. Yeah, that's cool, man. I, I wish you the best of luck. And I, I really hope you get to a final table because like, I feel like you've watched so much. You're going to have so much knowledge, right? The problem is you have too much knowledge, maybe. like you know, <laughs> Too many different styles. You're like, which one do I want to be? Do I want to play like a Damo and maybe actually bust first? Or, you know, like, which guy do you want to be? Well, you know, um, it, obviously every Saturday right now, we're going to do the Beat the Pros event, which I already plucked early. I couldn't play it last Saturday, but I definitely play it next Saturday, but two weeks ago, we had a very big Beat the Pros event. It was a $1,100 bounty event, you know, at least for my standards, obviously that's very big. And it was a lot of fun. And I think if you would have watched the way I played in that tournament, then I think you would have been pretty proud of me. You know, I played well, but then uh, in the end, I, I busted with Kings against fours and the fours made a set. But, <laughs> you know, I, I felt like, you know what, I actually the became fours a better set. Yeah, of course, the voice made itself. I was like, you know what? I do think I believe uh, after watching all these final tables and watching all of these amazing poker players, I feel like I became a better poker player myself, and it's really fun to see. Now, Yuri made a move here. Pre-flop, three-betting, queen-jack offsuit. But Nana, wrong moment to make a move. Yeah, the thing is, this normally would look really scary, uh, but Isaac Barron should know by now that Yuri did this with king-six offsuit against Rudy, and Rudy shoved ace-deuce offsuit, and yeah, that's there's no way Isaac Barron's gonna fold after seeing that. And Yuri, uh, he makes his plays. You know, he's got 20 big blinds. He likes to make these small re raises, try to look like a big aces or kings. But uh, it just none of these guys are buying it today. I think uh, he's not. He needs to drop that play for today. <laughs> Uh, I was wondering if Arseny was going to go all in or not. Uh, he doesn't even skip a beat, man. Arseny is an incredibly quick player. Blind Pew just ships the 10th pre flop here. Uh, I do really like the play, right? Like 25 bigs. Isaac Baron is second in chips. He's going to open pretty wide, but he doesn't want to lose three and a half million chips. So well done there by Blind Pew. Yeah, I would say that's uh, definitely the play you want to do with 210. Sometimes in this game, you just got to close your eyes and just jam because if you don't do that, uh, you end up making oh. some really big mistakes. And it's two pair versus the yeah. top pair, top kicker, blind versus blind. Uh, a lot of chips are uh, going to be lost there. Uh, yeah, I don't think Rudy is going to go anywhere. And Mikolai will be loving it, at least for now. Uh, I mean, this is an incredibly good setup for him. Fires 33% in the middle on the flop. Uh, Rudy's going to be like, I've got top pair, top kicker. I don't really see that many hands that can beat me. Go ahead and bet you're a king queen, you're a jack ten, you're queen jack. But that's not yeah, it. This, this is this is awful. Um, I don't blame him for raising. The hand is also very vulnerable. You don't want to get your opponent free card. Like, and there's the pretty much jam. Ace nine is now in a very, very tough spot because it's often the best hand. Uh, but if, if it's the best hand, you up against a draw a lot, right? Like a flush draw, jack 10. These hands actually have almost coin flipping with you. I think there's a chance Rudy might get away from his hand, given mm -hmm. how Mikolai's been playing. That is a great fold. Um, I think Mikolai's <laughs> just been too tight, like in a way that uh, it, Rudy's just like, nah, it's it's not worth it. Can we talk about Yuri just showing the five of diamonds there? It's like, guys... I just want everybody to know, I don't give away much, but I had the five of diamonds in that hand, okay? <laughs> I always love it when people show these cards that are like 
barely relevant or not even. It happens so often as well when you're just playing online. Always enjoy it. Well, the Sixers could be battling it out here with a screen offsuit. As Isaac Baron already showed us before. And he was willing to get a little carried away with Ace Jack suited. Ace Queen offsuit is going to get Yuri to fold one more time. You know what I've realized about the way that uh, Yuri or Undercover Dren plays? Is that I feel like there's a lot of pre-flop commitment. But he's definitely not willing to put his tournament life on the line very often. Yeah, that's correct. Um, he's very... He, I mean, he's been very aggressive, right? Like pre-flop. Yeah. Three betting to five and a half big blinds twice with garbage and has actually got jammed on twice um yeah he likes to put in chips but he doesn't like to commit unless he's got it uh, mm -hmm. and uh he doesn't I like think to some, for it these guys are, are having pretty good reads uh on him right now and but i think normally these plays would uh would really crush certain player types uh if they don't if they're not aware of how he's playing this could be a fun one King 8 suited, King Queen suited, Jack 10 suited. Somehow, King 8 suited flops best. Uh, obviously, a couple of backdoors are available. Yuri is sitting on the uh, gut shot, and 9 would give Yuri the straight. Yeah, and actually, it's checked over to Isaac Baron, who Ooh. now makes top pair, but blind pew, top two pair. Yep, Isaac Baron is going to feel pretty good about that turn card. Little does he know that at this point, it really is no good for him at all. That is a big bet by uh, Blind Pew. Do you think that's because it's three-way and, you know, it's been kind of a weird post-flop uh, line so yeah. far coming out of everyone? I agree. And, also, you know, he can represent a lot of draws, like the random six, the ten nines, the jack nine, two space. It's a lot of draws he can represent. So a lot of people are going to just call down a little bit and... There's another bet, and Isaac is in a very tough spot. Uh, well, he's, he's got a bluff catcher now once the ace rolls off. Mm, it's tough. I, I'm, I hope he can get away from it, but, you know, like, I don't blame him if he calls here. There's a lot of missed draws. It's just going to come down to his read on his opponent. Would he bluff in the spot in this situation? Yeah. If I was in Isaac's shoes here, it'd be so tough to really put Blind Pew on in hand. Or it's just like, he goes, check, check, check. Isaac does make the call, and he's going to receive the bad news that Blind Pew got the best of him with that King 8 suited, making two pair. Uh, I thought maybe the Ace could have saved Isaac, but apparently it didn't. I don't know, it's just a, a very hard hand to read, I think, right, if you're in the shoes of Isaac Baron there. Because it's a big blind. Like the, Obviously, the big blind special could be anything, but King Eight is probably one of the last hands that he would have put his opponent on. Uh, especially because you would expect King Eight to bet the flop, so he wasn't worried about the the kicker. Usually, it was just yeah, it was such an interesting hand. Um, oh. But you're already getting it done with the King Ten suited. He's just like, yep. you know what? I gotta get you one day, Rudy. Uh -oh. Are these folding? Are one. these folding? Yeah, these two under the gun, easy fold. <laughs> 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 now, Isaac Baron is going to open up and he's going to take this round down with the Queens. What would have happened though if Rudy would have shoved on him? Would it, that would, wouldn't that be a spot? Oh my goodness, it's out of nowhere. <laughs> what do you think he would do? <laughs> uh, <laughs> just do <too> insane. <laughs> yeah. Probably would fold, but who knows? Um, no. But anyway, these guys got to adjust, right? Like, everyone knows that he folded the two queens now. Uh, so I, I don't know if he's going to fold it again. But you never know. Like, some of these guys, right, they, they make a play once and they keep doing the play, right? They're like, they wouldn't think I'll do it again. Yuri is sitting on King-9 offsuit while he's the big blind. And he's sitting on uh -oh. 60 dicks. He's shoving and he gets snapped all by the ace-9 of Rudy. And Yuri will receive the bad news that he needs a king and a king only at this point. And it's still just the king. So I think this is the end of Undercover Dren. And a no great way summer. there's a king on a river. <laughs> Not this time, Nano. It doesn't always work like that. Yuri will walk away with $185,000 finishing in fifth place. You guys saw the beautiful gold line he had around his avatar. It means he is a WSOP champ. Uh, still a good run today, though, right, Nano? Like, he was actually ultra short stack quite early on. 
And I felt like he stuck around quite nicely. Well, he came into the final table in ninth place. So I would yeah. say that's a pretty good payday for a fifth place finisher. Um, he was very interesting, very fun to watch, a uh, very different player. And unfortunately, he's got sent his chips to Rudy again. Rudy has been crushing him hard, did the final KO blow. I don't blame him for reshoving the King Nine Osu. It's a good hand to reshove against a guy who's open a lot. Uh, but uh, Rudy is like, yeah, I'm not folding ace nine to you. You just, there's no way you're beating me. So well done. You know, we've had a lot of dramatic blow ups at these final tables. I think the one of Rune F really comes to mind the most, but we've had a few <laughs> more, right? Connor didn't have the greatest time and he came in as chip leader. Uh, but the three guys that came in with the three biggest decks are actually all three still in the tournament. Rudy, Isaac Baron, and Mikolai. And then Blind Pew came in in fifth. No, he came in as sixth. So he's the only one who's really kind of made a journey out of this. But that's quite unique. We don't see that very often, that the biggest decks coming into the final table actually stay the biggest decks, like after an hour and a half of poker. Yeah, um, I think that probably comes into play because of their play style as well. Well, one thing is they came in for a lot of big blinds, so you got more wiggle room to kind of like mm -hmm. chill. Uh, but they're all three of those guys that you just mentioned are very solid players. They're not really that out of line going really crazy, um, you know, and just spewing off their stack or maybe doubling up. Uh, so, you know, like before we lost Yuri, it was a bit grindy uh, five-handed for a while. Um, so, I, I, you know, we did lose them. But, you know, right now the stack sizes are very deep. It's 40 big blinds minimum. Um, you know, one guy's got like, what, 80 big blinds or so. It's... This is, this is going to be a bit of a grind with these guys, but, you know, that just means a lot more post-slot play. And who's going to out-solid who right now? Yeah, I feel like Mikolai is still a bit of a mystery, too, because we've seen him play, picks his spots well, but we haven't really seen that. Like, we haven't really seen anybody who really put Mikolai to the test, right? I feel most of the times when he got involved, he either really had it, or he had nothing, and then it's like one of the two. But we haven't really seen with these marginal hands yet where people are putting pressure on him. I'd, like to, I'd love to see uh, any of the other three guys put Mikolai to the test, some of these tough spots. Uh, hopefully we'll see it. As we are now down to four, all four of those guys winning at least $252,000. But I feel this is where it truly becomes uh, very fun. Look at this. Yeah, Arsene, like oh my it. goodness, and he gets called. <laughs> Blind Pew, no. he chooses his spots really well. Um, but this time, you know, Isaac Barron's like, nah, I'm, I'm not going for it. And he checks back. But I think the check is uh, it's good because I think he would check back some ace highs here. He can go for a delayed bet on the turn, on the river. And um, he's going to win this. He should be winning this pot. Isaac Barron would have to have some sick read to call queen five high or maybe go for a check raise, but uh, wow. not... Yeah, this, it's a very nice play. But these guys are, they're very solid. They're taking some stabs here and there, but they're they are not like triple barrel bluffing and stuff. <laughs> not yet, no, no, not yet. I feel like that's only uh, a matter of time. You see, Arsene is really mixing it up a lot with a lot of uh, pre-flop aggression, but definitely likes to limp every now and then as well. We saw him limp earlier with king-queen offsuit on the gun. This time he limps with 10-6 and does make top pair. Takes it down. Well, you know, Nano, I gotta say, it's been very unfortunate because the whole who do you pick has not been very fun for me today because Mr. Burns got eliminated immediately. And your guy is still going strong, but I have the feeling he's not gonna win it though. Like, I do think Isaac Baron capable, obviously, here finishing top three, maybe top two, but I don't think he's gonna take it down. It does seem like a Rudy you're going to win it, right? But I really feel like this is going to take some time, uh, given how they've been playing. Um, but uh, Blind Pew, I think, is the one guy. Who, he looks like the guy who's going to go for that triple barrel bluff or splash around a bit. Yeah. He, he's betting here with the ace five. He bet really big, actually, on the flop. Um, the king on the turns. If you're going to multi-barrel, this is a good card to multi-barrel. And I think there's a chance he, he throws some chips in, given he put that big bet on that flop. Well, don't forget the previous end. He was also betting really big with Jack Do's offsuit, I believe it was. This time it will go check, check on the turn. 
Rudy might feel a bit better about his pair of queens now, if he didn't feel good about it yet. Yeah, it's it's a tough hand to value bet uh, because you can easily be outkicked. Uh, you know, queen nine, a queen ten, ace queen. These hands probably will just check that turn as well, especially with a tank check on the turn. It's it's a little bit tricky. Uh, Rudy's trying to decide how often he's up against like sevens, eights, a six, these types of hands, and how often those hands will actually call a bet. Is there an argument to be made that maybe Blind Pew should have bet the turn because he's sitting on the Ace of Hearts as he does make the call on the river with his pair of fives. He's like, I might be good here. He's not. So that's another big pot heading to Rudy's way. Would you have liked to see him use that Ace of Hearts uh, as a way to apply some pressure on his opponent? I, I don't think it matters because it's not like a actual flush yet. Um, so I think, I think that doesn't apply in that situation. But uh, I... I want to give hats off to Rudy because uh, that was a very nice value bet. He thought about mm -hmm. it, and he actually only bet 25%. And Blind Pew just like, you know, I'm getting such a good price. I I'm just going to call here uh, with just a pair of fives. And uh, I I've been saying it, but Rudy's playing very, very good. I, I like his chances. And but look at this uh -huh. Isaac Baron out of line of the King 7. I don't <laughs> think Mikolai is going to get get involved. I don't know, just given how he's been playing, but this is a really good timing. No, no, this was the long con that Isaac, Bar Isaac Baron has been playing, okay? He's like, you know what? I'm going to fold Queen's preflop very early on into the show. I'm going to let all of them watch it. And then by the time we're like four left and the delay hasn't really caught up yet, but they all know. Oh, oh my okay. goodness, Mikolai, Mikolai. gets it done. Okay, you know what? Mikolai, wow. good read there. I didn't think he was going to do it, but uh, very, sick. very sick. That is a sick play with ace-10 offset. Uh, he's immediately opening up the next round as well with king-queen. Gets called by ace-10. Oh, my goodness. Obviously, both players make a pair. Both of them have a gut shot. What a move with ace-10 preflop, Nano. It's a very sick move, right? Um, I think you were right, though. Isaac Barron's, like, setting it up. It looks really credible, and I thought it was very credible, right? But... Uh... These guys, they're always one-upping each other in this game. And pre-flop decisions have been pretty interesting uh, from all these guys, and they've been making some oh, good wow. reads. And uh, it's Don't another bet here for King Queen. But yeah, it's uh, yeah. not going to be too good. Blind Pew makes a boat. It's a nut straight. Well, not yeah, a nut but... straight. Just a straight for Mikolai. I mean, how good can you really feel about your Broadway straight on this board? It's like, okay... If if it goes check check, but I like the fact that Arsene is leading out. I feel like he's almost targeting a king at this point. Gets called there as well. Blind Pew takes down a 4.4 million chip pot. So after all the pre-flop success Mikolai had in the previous uh, <laughs> round, he gave all of those chips away already in this one. Uh, that was quite a fun hand as well. Man, Arsene Blind Pew is playing excellent poker as well. And don't forget, last week, final table, I think he finished 8th or ninth place last week. But this is one hell of a run, I know, in the second biggest field we've had so far. Yeah, I, I do like the way uh, Blind Pew has been playing. And he, you know, I would say he, he seems to be the guy that's the most uh, active post-flop. Or, But, you know, he chooses his spot. He doesn't play every single pop, but when he does, he tries to win it every single time. Isaac is going to bet his ace queen. Very small bet, quarter pot, but Rudy is not tempted to continue. So it feels Rudy obviously still our dominant chip leader, but Blind Pew and Isaac are awfully close to each other. Mikla is starting to get the short stack. As a lot of you guys know, in case you're not, uh, the blinds don't go up by time here, but they go up by the amount of hands that they've played at the final table. You guys can see that on the top left side. So in seven hands, the blinds go up again. But all of these guys play quite quick. So obviously, the quicker they play, the more hands they play, the quicker the blinds will go up as well. And that means that things could get a little scary soon for Mikolai. Now look at this. Nice play for Isaac Barron. He's just like, you know, one of these three bets has got to get through eventually. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe what the catalyst was, was Yuri busting and everyone's just like, we all got a quarter million dollars. Let's just fight and play for a bit now. You know, feeling good. If I bust, no big deal. Um, I, that's the vibes I like. Well, those are the vibes you're getting so far, Nano. 
Five six against King Jack. We do have a club in the hand of Blind Pew. Do you really want to continue with the six of clubs though? Like even if you make your flush, you can't be sure that it's good. I won't be upset if he lets this one go, Nana. But he is a bit crazy, so who knows? The Russians are always crazy. Yeah, I was gonna say oh he thinks God. about Czech crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to love Blind Pew. I absolutely love it. Yeah, it's um I was gonna say you don't want to check call with the six of clubs, and if you're gonna continue, it's gonna be a check raise. And I think that small bet from Rudy induced Blind Pew to go for that raise and uh, pick up some extra chips he normally wouldn't be able to get. Um, but you know, Rudy can still lose his pot if he checks the turn in case a club comes. I mean, in a way, Rudy's hand got a bit better as he has an open-ended straight draw to go with his top pair at this point. So even if he does get called here, then obviously uh, there's plenty of river cards that will look quite good. But I think Rudy's going to be more than happy to take this one down. I didn't hate that Blind Pew took a stab at it, but against the chip leader, I think maybe against one of the other two players, that kind of stuff can work, right? Because 700,000 chips mean a lot to those guys. I mean, Rudy is sitting at 16.8 16 million. I feel Rudy is a never-ending upswing at this final table, by the way. Like, <laughs> has he been losing chips yet? What is happening? <laughs> yeah, he's just been super solid and just keeps adding a million here and there uh, once in a while, right? He, he's not trying to win the tournament right now, but he's grinding his way. Mikolai timing five dudes suited, raising, not timing good, but he did outflop his opponent with a pair of deuces. Like you are still waiting for some help with his ace nine. Starting to look pretty uh, grim. 1.1 million in the middle. That's obviously uh, a serious amount of chips for Mikolai. And the seven is safe. I don't know. I feel like these are the kinds of hands where even if Blind Pew all of a sudden leads out right now. I mean, he's got the nine, so yeah, you can pretend that you have a couple straights perhaps, but. And maybe it would have worked, but he decided not to go for it after it failed with the 5-6. That means that the blinds will go up in just four hands at this point. 160,000 big blind now already. Yeah, I think when the blinds go up the next one, that's when these uh, blind Pew and Mikolai is going to be like, oh, oh man, it's a 200,000 blind level where you're like, uh, maybe I need to uh, double up real soon. Isaac Baron. Flops pretty decent here, bottom pair and open-ended straight draw. I think he's not going to be too worried about the jacks pairing, right? Most of the time you feel pretty good about that if you flop bottom pair. You see the board pair as well, you're like, well, that means that my eights are probably still in the lead. I think it makes sense though that he doesn't want to get too crazy against Rudy, who obviously has the chips to put so much pressure on Isaac Baron. Yeah. Yeah, I think the way um, the way everyone's actually been playing is leave Rudy alone. Just yeah. check a lot more, you know, except Blind Pew. Blind Pew's been kind of going after Rudy a little bit. But uh, in general, that's how this final table's been playing. And that's actually really good for Rudy because he's going to get extra turns and river cards that he shouldn't normally get. He gets to realize his equity because people are afraid to see bet against him and have him check raise you. Well, when Mikolai has a stand offsuit, Crazy things happen free flop. So <laughs> let's see. As Blind Pew decides to open King Seven suited, maybe feels like he just wants to pick up one or two more blinds before the blinds go up. But we know Mikolai loves his ace ten. <laughs> I get in these three bet vibes, aren't you? Like it's just yeah, like one point one. Oh wow, there it's a small three bet, but it's still three bet. Yeah, he is going to three bet the hand. Um, yeah, he's just like, you already won a big pop ace 10, you know? Just something always clicks in your mind. It's like, I can yeah. get it done again. And he does get it done again. What do you make of that sizing, though? That's not something I see very often at these final tables to go from, uh, what was it, like 320 to 880? Yeah, about 2.5x. It's a, it's very small three bet. I think he actually lets his opponent have a lot of good odds to call out a position. Um, mm -hmm. But then again, if you know your opponent isn't going to call the three bet, then these sizings are better, right? You risk less. Um, it just really depends on how certain people play uh, their stack size. And, you know, Blind Pew is pretty short. I don't think Nikolai would use that sizing if his opponent was a little bit deeper. 
uh, but normally you would just see like the full 3x uh, 3-bit. All right. Let's see what happens here. Isaac Baron has a lot of outs to hit something good on the river. But at this point, he's still trailing against Rudy, his five. Fortunately for uh, Isaac, that is one of the cards he was looking for. Makes the straight. Actually, makes the nuts. He went for the check he... raise. You see that? Yeah. He's just trying to get sneaky. And now everyone's going to be like, okay, Isaac. Uh... This, this is going to be scary when you check to me. Well, that's a, a shame for Isaac because that was an absolute dream card, right? It wasn't even like the nine of hearts where it's like, okay, you made your straight, but still got to be a little careful for flushes. No, I made the good old coconuts, but didn't get paid off. Line pure limbs with uh, the 6 2 suited. And Mikolai's like, you know what? Let's take a flop, and that's not a bad flop at all for Mikolai. He makes trip nines against the absolute nothing of Blind Pew. Yeah, Blind Pew isn't going to bet. I mean, it's reasonable for him to bet out, but I guess it kind of looks like, look, if I had an ace or nine, would I really bet on this flop? Probably not. So he's just trying to mm -hmm. pretend he's got an ace right now. But uh, I would like to see Mikolai check. I think that's a very nice check because a lot of people get greedy, right? They hit the trip nines. I hope his opponent has an ace, but there's actually a lot of value in just checking, getting your opponent to, you know, bluff with his hand like do six. And Blind Pew is going to put a couple of chips in the middle. I do like what you said there because if he had an ace or a nine, yeah, maybe betting that flop is a bit fishy because if you have an ace or a nine, how likely is it that your opponent has a piece of that board? So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, I like how Mikolai just calls there. He's like, ah, you know, I don't have much, but that is actually a pretty decent size bet by Blind Pio. Just gets called. There is no race, but Mikolai is going to receive the good news that his trip nines are more than good enough against uh, the six that was playing of Blind Pio. And the next round, Mikolai picks up Kings. Oh, he's getting some momentum as well now. Yeah. Oh, that last uh, bet, I'm not sure if I liked it too much. A little blind spew, in my opinion, but, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. You make some mistakes here and there, but now, I, like I said, when the blinds go up to 200,000, someone's going to feel the pressure, and it's blind pew, right? He's only got 16 big blinds in a four-handed game. Yeah, maybe you don't like it because it didn't make a lot of sense, right? Like, what is he representing, and what is he trying to get his opponent to fold? Is that why he didn't like it? Exactly what you just said at the end. What is he trying to get his opponent to fold? And I guess he's yeah. trying to get his opponent to fold king high or queen high. But uh, those hands might not even call you, especially when you sized up a little bit uh, in that spot last hand. So Unfortunate for the Russian, as he was doing a good job in chipping up uh, his way before. He was at 7 million chips at one point. Now all of a sudden he is the shortest stack of the remaining four players. Isaac Baron. So we're going to lead out here with the queen nine. He's like, well, <laughs> don't have much. But if I don't have much, maybe you don't have much either. When you defend a big blind, you need to be stabbing a lot with these kind of straight draws and stuff. Otherwise, you you can't really defend a big blind that profitably. Uh, you just need to be trying to win some pots. Because you're going to often make a lot of, a lot of nothing. Mm-hmm. Well, this is maybe a good board to try your luck one more time. Isaac is thinking about it. He's like, nah. We just saw Mikolai slow play trips. You know what? <laughs> you can have it, my friend. And he's going to receive the sad news that maybe a proper bet on the river would have actually taken it down. So that would have been hard to call with Ace-9. Mikolai is picking up some serious momentum here. I said it before when he got the kinks, but he's on the roll. I think it ever it started with that ace ten uh, four bet jam. You know he's just feeling mm -hmm. really good. Uh, you know, and he's grinding up, and the blinds are higher now, so he's picking up even more chips. Yeah, he had a small setback in the following hand, but he never really forgot it. Then he picked up ace ten again, and he's like, "All right, this is it. This time we're going all the way, Rudy. I'm coming." Isaac Baron picks up ace queen uh, offsuit. He's going to make the race here. Rudy might tag along, actually. An 8-5 suited. Why the hell not? Unfortunately for Rudy, he doesn't really flop a whole lot. 
I don't think that this hand is really going to go anywhere. There's no need for Rudy to really commit more chips here. The blinds have gone up there now. 100, 200 at this point. And that means that uh, Blind Pew is sitting on 15 bigs. I mean, you can wait, but you don't want to wait too much longer. Yeah, it's the thing is, the guy who's in third is outchipped you a lot, right? Third and second are almost the same stack now. Mm -hmm. Everyone's just looking at Lime Pew, and everyone's playing really solid, right? Uh, and then eventually someone goes out. This is kind of the way this final table has been going. Not too crazy. But, you know, people are sticking around pre-flop, sticking around a flop here and there. And, uh, yeah, here's the continuation bet. Isaac's got A7. It's not a good ace high, but it could easily be the best hand, so it is worth a call. But you get outdrawn sometimes. It was the best end, so he was correct, and you were correct. Unfortunately, no more, as really does make a pair of nines on the turn. And this is a pretty serious pot already, 2.3 million. It's a funny uh, river card, a four of clubs. Completes a whole bunch of draws. We'll see if Isaac wants to uh, pretend that he has one of them. That's a big bet by Rudy. It's a very big bet. Don't think that's yeah. a value bet, right? Yeah, it's a value bet. I mean, we saw him value bet the queen eight earlier with like second pair. So yeah, Rudy's really good at recognizing where he's at. I uh, try to get looked up by a six. Uh, a six, I yeah. guess, yeah. Must have been specifically a six then, because otherwise... Exactly. Uh, no, yeah. Mikolai decides to open it up here under the gun. King six, but Rudy has ace queen suited on the button. It's obviously nice as chip leader when you have a pretty high VPIP as well. You guys can see that. Uh, obviously, a lot of people that are new to the clients, like what are the small numbers next to the time bank? That's the amount of times that they put chips voluntarily in the pot. So you can see how active they've been over the last 50 hands. And Rudy has been very active, but then it's always very nice when you pick up monsters like Ace Queen. I mean, but he just flat says queen in position. Oh. So, you know, he's getting a little bit punished, right? You know, he didn't bet the flop. He didn't re-raise pre-flop. Uh, I think it's just everyone being a bit tighter right now and just their play styles when Blind Pew is still around. I do always feel so bad myself when I have a nice hand like ace queen. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to set up the trap. But then it's just like you completely miss and then you get all drawn and you're like, geez, Louise, I did a terrible job. This and you know, like, it's, and you, you always lose against some king four offsuit or something as well. You're like, what did I do? You know, like, should have never been in this position. But I don't know if Rudy's going to feel like that. Maybe he's got no time to feel like that because he's obviously still the chip leader here. And it's time to let this one go. Right. I mean, he's got the best possible nothing hand again. The not nothing, but... <laughs> yeah, the thing is, I don't think you should be hero calling here because it, it doesn't make sense. Like, if someone was bluffing, they probably would have bet the flop. If they didn't bet the flop, they probably would have bet the turn. The fact that he just goes check, check, it just seems so unlikely that ace queen is good. But it's the nut Whoa. straight. These two guys just keep making big hands against each other. Yep, and Rudy, once again, right? Top pair, top kicker with ace nine offsuit. That's the exact same scenario as we saw before, and he bets big on this flop nano. This could spell trouble. I kind of hope that Mikolai just calls. The reason I mm -hmm. say that is his hand, it's obviously the nuts, but Rudy folded the ace nine before, so um, he is going for a check raise. Uh, I I'm just... I'm I'm a little bit wary that Rudy might like get away from his hand just given how he played against him before with top pair top kicker and he wow, folds and he again. Does. That's back to back folds with ace nine while flopping top pair top kicker. That is, I mean, on one hand you can say that we expect that from these guys because these are obviously super good poker players, but that's still really impressive to me, Nano. Yeah, no, it's very impressive, and that's the thing. That's why I wanted to see Mikolai just call. Normally you would be check raising the straight there, but. I just had that vibe that, you know, Rudy can get away from his hands. He's not going to, like, call the flop. Even if he had, if Rudy had, like, two jacks on the flop, right? He probably calls a check raise, but he probably might get away from a turn or a river card. By just calling, you let him hang himself. Maybe you mm -hmm. don't win all the chips, but your goal is to win, you know, like, five billion chips or so. 
Yep. And imagine if an ace rolls off on the turn or something. He's like, catching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then there is like almost absolutely nothing that can go wrong. Jack 8 is leading out here. Rudy does make the correct call with 5 4. He's still in the lead, but obviously the Ace of Hearts is giving Mikolai a whole bunch of additional outs. At this point, any Jack, any 8, or any Heart will give him the best possible hand. Yeah, he's thinking about betting again, and I wouldn't fault him. It is blind versus blind. He's got a lot of outs against like a 7, a 4, 3, and try and get those hands to fold. Is very reasonable when the ace comes off, but he is going to just check, uh, which Rudy is probably loving. You know, you don't you don't want to get barreled into again on this card. Well, see what Rudy decides to do. In the past, we did speak quite Ooh. a bit about protecting your Paris, but Rudy decides to not to do it. Mikolai does make the best hand on the river with the eight of diamonds. I mean, too many out syndrome. Sometimes it's real nano, not this time. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of these guys have been giving up free cards and letting their opponent realize their equity with hands that probably would just fold if, to a bet. And uh, it's it's punishing some of these players. Nikolai, he's going to have a, a lot of chips now. He, he's got over 10 million after this hand ends. I mean, we saw Rudy make a couple of excellent folds. Eventually... I feel like no matter how good you are in poker, you're sick of folding. Rudy does make another correct fold here. And that's only because he's been beat on the river. But I do feel it's just human, right? As uh, Isaac picks up aces this round. But like no matter how many times you can tell yourself, like I should have folded here, I should have folded here. I feel like eventually it gets to you. Do you have that as well, Nana? No, I, I definitely have. I think a lot of people have that. And, you know, yeah. Isaac Barron, he was making some good folds. And then he's just like, no, I'm calling up the king queen against your two pair of blind pew. Uh... So, you know, all of these guys have that. It's about staying, keeping your emotions in check. It is going to be three bet Isaac Barron, and he's three bet a few times. But, you know, Mikolai's like, you know what? I got these chips. I'm going to hang on to them this time. I'm not going to call them seven, six suited, which is a hand you could call a three bet with. Blind Pew got the big blind here, and obviously he's been chipping down rapidly. He's now sitting on 13 big blinds. And I don't really see any reason for him to defend this one, so he's going to let it go. I do feel like this is the same scenario that we mentioned before with Yuri, where at this point, even if Blind Pew doubles up, he's still by far and away the shortest stack at the table. Uh, but I think eventually, now you do got to go for it, because if you start dropping on the 10 or 9 big blinds, the rest is just looking at you to, until you're eliminated from the table, right? So I, I feel like you don't really want to go any lower than like 1-8, 1-7. He's definitely thinking about it. He might just shove this King-8 suited here. Um, yeah. Just like... Let me pick up some blinds and survive. I honestly think he should. Because if you don't do it here, how many better scenarios are you going to get? And you're not loving it. He's just going to raise. The problem is, what do you do if they shove on you? Do you fold then? I guess you do, right? You do have to fold. Um, the problem of just raising is you let your opponent in the big blind see flops. Um, and it's bad if, in the case, say the big blind out flops and then you see bet the flop, you're down to like 1.5 million or so. Um, and this scenario is actually good for him. He is going to pick up a little bit more chips, but uh, I think I would have liked to see the open jam with King 8 suit. It seems a little bit strong enough. You know, I know, of course, you're not loving it when you get called. You know, you're always behind, no, yeah, but yeah. Uh, uh, I, I would have liked to see him, him probably just jamming in with that stack size, but no, I, I'm just happy he didn't fold, you know? Rudy is going to open up the King-8 suited preflop as well. Isaac Perrin is going to fold. Obviously, the more hands being folded preflop, the quicker the blinds do go up. <laughs> Man, I feel like we've seen a lot of aces tonight, Nano. Jeez. Yeah, but I don't think the aces have been getting some crazy action. No. They've just been picking up some blinds here and there, but nothing special. You know, in Stalker, we have a meme where then we say, but still... It comes from a Ukrainian interviewer who once upon a time used butt steel at a very funny moment. It's like, all right, they didn't get too much action, but still, it's still aces, and they've still been taking down the blind. So I uh, I don't think it's bad. And yeah, I, I feel like it's been seven or, yeah, I think six or seven aces in an hour and a half. Not incredibly insane, but I feel more than usual. Yeah, definitely, definitely a lot of aces, but with no action. This has been a... The beginning was pretty quick for all the short stacks, but in general, like I've been saying, it's been quite mild and, and, and slow. It's a bit grindy. 
Mm -hmm. and but that's how poker really is it's not like oh big bluffs every single <laughs> pot. it's about your timing it's about out grinding your opponents when you can um and you know at the final table it's, it's about pay jumps pay jumps are very important we're playing for a lot of money up top and they're already guaranteed a quarter of a million dollars Mikolai is going to bat his uh, pair of fives here. We start feeling pretty good about your pair of fives when the board is king, king, five, deuce. Blind Pew is wondering if this is the moment where he should make a move. I don't think that Blind Pew really believed that Mikolai had a part of it, but it's just, he's like, ah, if I'm wrong here, I'm out. Let's wait. Maybe I can find a better spot. But he's down to 10 big blinds right now. And that obviously means it's, uh, it's getting pretty dire. Yeah, I think you're right. It's just like sometimes when you get that very short stack, you're like, I feel like I really should bluff here or really make yeah. a move. But like, if I'm wrong, it's a disaster. I'm down with like five big blinds left or whatever. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with you on that one. It's Isaac betting the ace jack, picks up a straight draw now. Pair of nines of Rudy still in the lead. I mean, once again, I don't think Isaac wants to get too carried away here. Obviously, he can look to the left as well. I see Blind Pew sitting there on 10 bigs. Does make a pretty big bet. That's like, wow, and he gets to Rudy to fold the best. And I feel like Rudy has made... Rudy just doesn't like pair of nines, okay? I think I've got it figured <laughs> out now, now. It's not the top pair, top kicker that he's folding. There is something about a pair of nines that Rudy is just not a fan of, and... Uh, he just likes to let those go. Yeah, I mean, uh, this one's a little bit easier. I mean, it's it's this more reasonable fold, right? Because it's like a third pair. Yeah. Uh, but the two other ace nine hands were some really sick folds, and it was against the same exact player. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I was I was memeing a little bit, and those were very impressive folds. You're always so. memeing. You're always memeing, right? <laughs> Not always. Quite often. <laughs> I mean, you should see me play, mate. I'm spamming emotes nonstop. <laughs> Snapcams and everything. Like, I've been having the most fun with Snapcam. Yeah. It's been, uh, it's been the best. Uh, we lost our, our guy, Mario, who who probably would have been the emoji guy, right? Like you were saying. Yeah. Um, but but no emojis. spamming emotes when we played. Rudy is sitting still on the not flush draw here, and obviously he does have the best hand, but there is a possible chop scenario if the last card is an eight or higher. We are going to chop this one up if it goes check, check. And I kind of feel like that's a bit unnecessary. Rudy still has more chips. He's sitting on the nut plush draw. Actually, the five is a good card for Rudy. Little does he know. Yeah, it isn't going to be a chop pop. But yeah, like these guys are, are not multi-barreling as much. But I'll say that when they do multi-barrel, it probably is going to work. Uh, like you saw Isaac Barron bet the, the ace jack on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, because... If they're not multi-barreling all the time, it sure seems like they got a top pair at least, and it has been working when they've done it. Mikolai picks up kings. Also not the first time we saw kings tonight. Blind Pure can't really do anything with Jack Deuce offset. I don't, by the way, I don't know if you feel the same way, but if I'm Isaac Baron and I lose a hand like that, ace three against ace seven, because the river is a card load and eight, I feel like I just got sucked out on, even though I was behind all along. I was like, hey, that was my job, you know, what's happening over here? <laughs> right, or like say you, um, you get in like a ace 10 versus, uh, ace nine versus ace 10 or something, and then like you just a double paired board and a river to 10, you're like, oh, I got sucked out on, even though you were behind the whole way. <laughs> 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 well, this hand is uh, rather interesting as Mikolai obviously already had top pair now he makes top two pair on the turn Rudy is still sitting on a pair of sevens and a gut shot but he lets it go Rudy is good in not getting in trouble I definitely have noticed that yeah he's playing really solid and I think Mikolai um, he's he should be recognizing that Rudy is folding really big hands to him um, so I didn't really like that he went for that over bet just now, uh, with the two pair, just because Rudy's, if he's folding top pair, top kicker, well, he's not going to be calling you down mid pair and bottom pair. And yeah, you're <laughs> representing the draws, but like, if they're not calling you down, what's the point? You might as well, you need to start getting some value from your opponent and just maybe changing your sizing and maybe go for the big bets, uh, when you don't got it. 
Well, Rudy really makes stuff there on the turn. I definitely love to see him bet here. I am a big fan of the way that Rudy has played almost every hand so far tonight. But I do think eventually you want to get some value out of your hands as well. I gotta say that's big. <laughs> I didn't think that he was gonna bet 700k into a 900k pot, but you know what, Nano? I like it. <laughs> Power play. Yeah, I mean nothing wrong with that. You got the top pair, um, but you know, right now it's let's wait for Blind Pew to just get it in and. Rudy just opened up 9-5 offsuit. You know, he's been a really solid chip leader, though. Like, I feel like he just hasn't been too crazy. Well, guys, Nano kind of predicted it, and I think he was right. We had a very explosive first hour where we lost four players in, well, the blink of an eye. And then the following hour has been a bit grindy. Nikolai is making an excellent impression as he is very close to becoming the chip leader at this point. We're down to four. We're going to take a couple of minutes for ourselves. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the coverage of the High Rollers Super Millions. This is the 14th edition. This tournament happens every single week on this channel. So if you don't follow this Twitch channel yet, what are you waiting for? Uh, it's honestly been really cool. We've seen some of the biggest stars in poker play at these final tables. And obviously if you love poker, that's awesome, right? Whole cards up, you kind of get to see the way that they approach these final tables. I've been really loving it. 14 weeks so far. This is the second biggest edition we've had. 352 entries. Nano is gone. I'm going to take a couple of minutes as well. And we'll be back in just a bit to continue the coverage of this 14th edition. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.
Alrighty, guys, as you can see, I'm back. Nanonoko will be back as well uh, real soon. As the action will continue in 90 seconds. Just want to tell you guys one more time that the small stake series is going on at this point and will be happening in the next two weeks over at GG Poker. I personally think it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to do my best to have a couple of proper runs. I've been uh, really enjoying streaming some poker myself as well. Some, some streams are better than others. I'm the first to admit it. But it's been a lot of fun, and I think any of those kinds of tournament series is always really cool to witness. Now, going back to this final table, it is safe to say that Blind Pew is in a bit of trouble. As you guys can see, he's now sitting at eight big blinds, and I believe that the blinds will be going up again soon. And there's been a lot of uh, pre-flop play, which obviously means the blinds go up quicker and quicker. I think in the final three, though, that could still take a little while. You know, Isaac Baron, 35 picks. Ah, he should have plenty of play left. Hopefully you guys have been having fun so far. Um, let's see what else we can make. Of course, there's still, uh, I mean, the sign up is always running. I think you guys know, I've been mentioning it in the previous weeks, but if you guys live in a country where you are allowed to play on GG Poker, you guys can always use GG TV as a sign up bonus. You get a hundred dollars as well. And then recently there's been some very exciting changes to the whole fish buffet. Where, I mean, it's it's a bit of a mouthful to explain it all, but previously the steps were kind of small, and especially if you play cash games, you would be able to unlock a spin relatively quickly. All of it has changed. Now you need a lot more points, but then the spins are going to be a lot better as well. Uh, I don't know if I can get one of my spins, but I'd be very excited to get one of them, as uh, especially the shark spins look mighty fine right now over at GG Poker would be a $7,500 buffet spin. Now that's an exciting spin, Nano, if you can get all those points. I'm going to do my best, but there will be many, many hours of poker for me. Yeah, when you get it, you should uh, stream that one or whatever. And uh, Yeah, yeah. You know, that, that's the important part, right? No, the absolutely. <laughs> I, stream, I stream some of my spins, man. I've had a couple of like bad moments as well as a sucker as I am. As you guys can see, we already have our first head live again. At one point, I was like, oh, I need 5,000 points more for a spin. Let's get it, guys. And then, obviously, I burned five buy-ins in PLO and, like, just to get... And I'm like, what am I doing? You know, what kind of a donkey am I? But, you know, this happens to the best of us. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, Rudy takes the lead here on the turn. We're uh, making a pair of queens. Yeah, um, he did check back the flop as they've been playing. Mikolai is going to just try to value bet. I don't blame him. Like, a lot of times your opponent has, like, ace-9, ace-10. They're just going to check back. Uh, but it's going to be hard for him to get away from this. I feel like when he checks, you kind of got to pay off with the ace-5 here because you're up against two spades a lot. Mm -hmm. But he's just going to bet himself. And Hmm. The thing is, with Queen Jack, usually you don't raise here, right? Because you're thinking, well, my kicker is pretty weak. But this very reasonable chance you should raise because it's just such a small bet. Well, Rudy does make the correct raise. Rudy definitely has been on the correct end of almost all of these somewhat marginal decisions. Either when he's behind, he makes the correct faults. Or when he's uh, ahead, he goes for that extra bit of value. Whether he gets it or not. It truly really is impressive to see. Let's see if Blind Pew goes for it. I almost feel like he has to. Six big blinds at this point. King nine off suit. You don't love it. He's going to go for it. And I do believe he's going to get called. Because we know Mikolai loves himself. Some ace 10 off suit. That's the hand of the night for Mikolai. And he is ahead. Let's see if we're down to three or not. Oh. Mm, oh, oh. There's no a way there's a jack on the river, right, Nano? <laughs> that just couldn't happen. It could be an ace, so it's not. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, blind two, you definitely got to go up to king nine. And I guess ace 10 can't win every single time. Well, the thing is, Mikolai's ace 10 has been winning by getting his opponents to fold, not by mm -hmm. calling and seeing five cards. Yeah. It's just hard to get a guy who's already all in to fold, right? <laughs> it's like, well... <laughs> Can you take your chips back and just commit a big line and then see what you want to do? No, unfortunately, that's kind of against the rules. <laughs> Rudy uh, tries to get a little fancy here with his 4-3 offsuit, but he does take the lead as he makes a pair of fours. 
Yeah, Rudy's been actually raising into Isaac Barron's big blind with really bad hands. I think mm -hmm. because he knows Isaac Barron um, is trying to ladder win blind pew with so short, uh, especially with this kind of a stack size. So, um, wow. yeah, and it's two pair. Yeah, <laughs> can't lose his hand anymore. That doesn't happen very often, right? When you play 4-3 and you've got your opponent that was ahead pre-flop drawing dead on the turn. It's a pretty good feeling. Bet's very big again, uh, once more, like 70-80% of the pot almost. And he's going to be able to take it down, so he will extend his chip lead. And he's back to the 16.3 million he was at once upon a time. Wakes up with pocket tens the next hand. Not a bad hand to look at either. Yeah, um, these guys, have, when they have been sizing up today, you know what, in general, I actually haven't seen many crazy bluffs, or even like... Bluffs? I don't think we've seen too many bluffs, have we? Like, just continuation bets here and there, but not like a big turn bet or a river bet. Mm -hmm. I think the only guy who's been bluffing a lot is Blind Pew. <laughs> um, Isaac Barron's been throwing some bluffs here and there as well, but, you know, in general, I would say this has been a value bet type game. Well, you're definitely correct in that one. And it does feel that Rudy has made the best decisions. When he was put to the test, when he was put in tough spots, uh, played a lot of his hands correctly. 6 9 will make the call here, praying for that 7 or perhaps just a pair. Doesn't get there. You think Rudy's going to bet again? He might. But the thing is, Ace 10 has a lot of uh, good showdown value. Like, because you beat the Ace 3, the Ace 4, the, like, there's a lot of Ace highs you beat. And he might even pick off a river bet here. Um, but Wow, I'm surprised the 9-6 doesn't go for a stab. Mm -hmm. I do think you kind of need to uh, because you're going to be up against like 10 high and jack high and queen high. And I just feel like you should just throw out a little bit. It wasn't probably wasn't going to work, but uh, yeah, it, just, it seems a little bit passive to, with that hand. Well, we're already on to the next one. And in three hands, the blinds will go up again. I mean, Blind Pew is uh, staying alive, but obviously it's not going to get any easier for him. Isaac Baron is going to be the one betting out here with his king high flush draw. And he's going to take it down. I'm with you. It's definitely been a final table where it started off incredibly explosive, where it felt that we couldn't even speak about anything other than the cards that were in the middle. And for the last hour and a half, it's been a lot of solid poker for sure. Uh, not too many out-of-line plays, not too many crazy setups we've seen. It's just been kind of a lot of these hands have played okay. themselves. There we go. Right That's what we, we want that, to see. Yeah, Isaac Baron gets uh, pretty feisty over here with his ace-three offsuit. Um, that, like, you know, he, he's that guy you were saying, right? Like, he's, he's setting it up, right? You know, go for the bet, uh, bluff when he can, and... I think that's really well done because Rudy has opened into his big blind three times, like just many times with the worst hands possible. Uh, it's a very good adjustment by Isaac Barron. And just, you know, you got to make your stance, uh, even though there's a guy that's pretty short. Well, I think the guy that's pretty short is about to go all in here, and that's good news for him. At least Rudy is opening under the gun. Blind Pew immediately fires it in. I'm actually surprised that Blind Pew has used 3 minutes and 10 seconds of his time bank because <laughs> it really feels that the longest decision he's had tonight was 4 seconds, but apparently he wasted some time somewhere down the line. But hey, all of a sudden he's back to 3 million. And now one double up and he's completely back in the game. Yeah, he does have the most time of all these guys though, so he, he is the fastest. I mean, a lot of poker players really analyze the way, like, how quickly people bet as well, right? But I think in a way you can also use it to your image where if you 3-bet or 4-bet very quickly pre-flop, you go like, oh, that must be aces or kings. Like, that's what you hear on every poker stream. But, like, there is some truth to it, obviously, but I definitely don't think that's something you can always rely on either because people can obviously play into that. Yeah, I, I think... Um... It can easily be a big mistake if you uh, assume that. Because uh, you can have a pretty good read on some guy, and it's probably correct. But if you make the same read against everyone, uh, yeah. and it's wrong, it's really bad uh, for you. Because you could be making some really heroic folds. Like the two queens of Isaac Barron, right? He saw the quick 4-bet uh, from Blind Pew. And <laughs> Blind Pew, 
would should be out of this tournament. I, I think. I assume that he's not for betting that big to fold the rest of his chips. So, no. you know, this, this very a lot of different scenarios can happen. I would say this though: if if we still had Kale Burns, your pick, yeah, we would have a very different uh, ending here. I feel like he's the guy that be like, man, these guys are all playing nits, and we just freak, I'm just going to keep betting and, and bluffing them. Oh wow, look at this mid pair value bet. And, and things are getting a bit spicy now. And Rudy has got a clear chip lead. Um, yeah, he's he's not playing like some crazy poker, but like he's he's really out grinding his opponents really well. <laughs> Blind Pew is all in again within 0.1 second. He looks at his first two cards. I feel like he used the squeeze function. He used the king of space. He's like, that's it. I'm all in. <laughs> he's like, yeah, we'll see what the second one is. Uh, and this could actually be another hand bar. I think he might just shove it again, right? I mean, 12 Insta. bigs, pocket seven. Why the hell not? Insta shove. Hey, mate, he, all of a sudden, he's over 4 million now. What was he at? Like 1.2, 1.3 at one point when he shoved about the king? 1.8, about 1.8. 1. Okay. I feel like he had six or seven big blinds at one point. Um, anyways, we're moving on. Blind Pew definitely back into it because Isaac Baron is within striking distance from him now. Only 2.7, uh, 6 million chips more. As we have ace four betting Ooh. and Mikolai folds the best hand. The five I'm not, go into I'm the not loving the way Mikolai played that one. Like pre flop, he just he might have could have been able to just jam it in. Flop, I think he should have called. I mean, Rudy's like we've seen him bet like 25%, just trying to take it down. But I think Mikolai's he's trying. I think when the blinds have gone up and his stack Ooh. side is strong. Oh well, my god. Okay. Like, who oh cares what my. I'm talking about? It's the, Great versus two pair can't. I don't think Rudy can get away from this one, right? No, that'd be too much. Like if it's just a, if he would have had like ten jack, I believe he could. But with like but ah uh, no. Well, he just calls the flop bet, and that's gonna save him the chips actually. Mm, I still think that this spot is gonna get very big. It, it's Nicole... gonna get big. He doesn't have to lose a Malta. Uh oh. Well, that is Maybe. a pot size <laughs> bet. And let's see what Rudy decides to do now. I mean, he might, might put his jam. opponent on, on like, king-queen or queen-jack, right? Like, I think those would yeah. play it in a very similar way. Oh, nice. Oh! oh my god. You oh. did not do that. <laughs> okay. Do you think the fact that it's the ten of spades as well is going to scare Mikolai? I mean, Mikolai does check, but can you really fold the not straight here? I mean, flushes get there, and obviously four houses are all of a sudden a possibility, but... Oh... The yeah, thing is, Blind well, is not even that short anymore, right? Okay, I think you just call this then, right? He's definitely just going to call here. And, uh, wow, this this is it's a big pot, obviously. Um, that pot could have got even bigger um, if people played their hands a little bit differently. But actually, Rudy, by just calling the turn, I actually think he was a little bit worried uh, because normally most people would just ship it in on the turn yeah. or maybe just raise that flop. Well, Rudy was already a dominant chip leader. He has now taken a monstrous lead as Rudy uh, clearly has more chips than the rest of the table combined. He almost has doubled the amount of chips of the, the other three remaining players. Yeah. Uh, 22 million. That's probably one of the biggest stacks that we've seen in a very long time when we're four-handed. And at this point, he's like, happy shoving season. You know, it's opened and I'm loving it. You can shove almost anything. Like, what's the worst thing that could happen? He loses yeah. three or four million chips. You can take that. You can shove again. But he's going to win half a million each time he does this. And it's yeah, like, by the time he gets called, it's like free rolling that all in. And the thing is, yeah. these guys are playing so solid and so tight, right? In, in general, that they're not, they all understand the ICM really well. And that, you know what that situation means? It means you can't call the all in. So this is actually perfect for rudy he's going to be able to chip wow. up so well and isaac baron here of a7 suit might just open full i don't uh, think i, I don't think, don't think he should shove but uh he, he thought about it. he's like am i supposed to really raise it am i supposed to i don't know but uh you know you can see the isaac is, baron was like he was in tough spot already free flop the thing is i really obviously now we see that rudy has like seven four offsuit so he can't do much but how do you think Rudy would have played a king queen suited there or a king Oh, he's Jack shipping or... it in 100%. He's yeah. just, yeah, for sure. All right. Maybe this is a hand where Isaac and Blind Pew are actually able to play some poker. Ace three suited is going to open and Isaac sitting on queen 10 suited. 
This is going to make the call. Ace three is still in the lead. Yeah, I, I just feel like Rudy has got the perfect scenario to chip up ever since that pot. Um, <laughs> like the tone has really shifted for the other three. They're like thinking, like, how am I going to try maybe cruise into first somehow? Now they're all thinking, how am I going to make sure I get second and then battle it out for first? I mean, the pay jumps are so big, right? 252 is nice. 343 is better. 457 is starting to sound good. But the first place is the second biggest first place we have had in 14 weeks of the High Roller Super Millions. Um, but yeah, even second is basically like winning a regular one, right? Like most of the time, first place was 440, 450. Well, you're able to take that down right now. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, you know, you, you got to feel so good when you're one of the other guys, not the chip leader winning a pot. You're like, oh, well, I, I increased my chip stack and I knocked down their chip stack a little bit, right? Those guys are super short. Here's the Jack-9 just shipping it in. Like, Rudy is really, he, like, he doesn't care that Isaac Barron has, like, 25 big blinds because he's thinking Isaac Barron's only going to call, like, Ace-King suited or, or whatever. Here's, he's got Ace-King suited. Speaking of, <laughs> he, goes, he got Ace King suited. Rudy might actually call this because 8 7 is a hand that doesn't flop that bad. Takes the lead with a power of sevens. Oh, oh, oh. I feel like this can get gnarly. Well, it's oh, an ace on the turn. So Rudy does get out turned. Seven of hearts on the river. For the ultimate <laughs> setup. <laughs> well, I think Isaac should is going to bet this turn, and I don't know if Rudy's going to call one here. No, I, I feel like this very, is a really obvious ace, right? Yeah, really obvious, right? Like check back to flop. <laughs> probably would have opened mini hands to begin with. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good, good fold. That almost has to be an ace. This could be a shove here from Mikolai. He is now the shortest stack at this table, and he's going to take this one down. Obviously, with the blinds going up this quickly, because we have so much pre-flop play. I mean, every round is massive. There is a half a million in the middle, like you said before as well. Eights are going to shove, and eights should be able to take this one down as well. Just like that, a million chips heading into Mikolai's way. It's insane. Yeah, and uh, he's only got 11 big blinds too. <laughs> Four absolute garbage hands. Oh, the walk with seven dudes offsuit. <laughs> That's when you feel like you're stack. on top of the world. Yeah, it's the shortest stack. You get a walk on your big line with seven dudes offsuit. It doesn't get much better than that. I like that as well, shoving the queen jack suited. Standard play, but still scary, right? Because you're shoving 2.7 into a guy with 22 million. You're like, the other guys is short as well. Oh, shoves 12 bigs, ace three from the bottom. Mikolai is not afraid, mate. He's like, this shoving thing is working out. <laughs> well, it's, a, it's an easy game to play. King Jack, though, he's like, hmm, I've got a, I've got a lot of chips now. What do I do? Do I raise? Like, it's the same thing as Isaac Baron, the tank. What do I do? I guess I'm going to min raise. I think that's what Mikolai is going to end up with. Oh, he actually just open folded. So Mikolai's like, I had a, enough shoving for me. I'm out. Uh, and King Nine is an okay hand to shove, but it's just not very nice to call anything with, because you rarely have the feeling that you're going to be ahead. Well, Isaac, Isaac Baron with the shove, queen right? hand. I think he might just open. No, he's shoving. Okay. Well done. You know, I don't know, Nano, but obviously in the client, uh, besides all the tournaments and then the cash and then the uh, the, the Russian play. You also have all in or fold over a GG poker, and you can make bingo, and then you can hit a jackpot. I'm starting to feel like I am playing some all in or fold poker over here, and I'm trying to complete my bingo card. <laughs> right, and the thing is, uh, even the chip leaders, they're forced to go all in or fold. And you can see he just jammed the <laughs> 8 5 offsuit. Um, yeah, we've turned into an all in or fold tournament, but with huge pay jumps. <laughs> I actually, uh, I had, force might call, right? I mean, sure. Wow, oh, that's he a folds. big fold. Guess he doesn't want to flip. But the problem is, mate, you're the shortest stack at the table already. And the big blind is, is so big. I mean, Rudy is just shoving almost anything as well. 
Yeah. Oh, man. I guess he just doesn't, he's just hoping someone else maybe busts first, and it's yeah. this could be it. Well, actually, no, I don't think so. I don't think Isaac's going to shove. Yeah, I was going to say Isaac's going to raise and fold, probably. Because Isaac has too many big blinds to start the hand, that's why he didn't just open jam himself. Because he doesn't want Rudy to wake up with the hand. Um, King 2.3 million to win 6.1? He's getting a good price with his hand. The problem is, if he loses, it's, it's, it's pretty bad. It, he might call, yeah. a call here. Uh, it's just, it's not, it's not a good spot. It's not a good spot. It's not a pleasant spot. And for the first time in quite some time, you can see that one of our players truly has a proper decision to make here. Okay. Isaac does find a fold somewhere, and we know it was the correct fold. Rudy is giving us the not sure if. I love it. It's fun to spam emos when you are out chipping everybody 10 to 1. You know, that's a, that's a good moment to spam some emojis, Nano. Wow, just the jack douche just ship into Isaac Baron. Rudy is just like, <laughs> he's just like, yeah, you're not going to call anything, Isaac. I've seen how you've been playing. His 9 6 suited. Wow. Rudy is just, this is like the perfect situation for him. He's playing it perfectly, actually, um, in this all in or fold situation. He's thinking, can I get away at the 6 deuce offsuit? It's a <laughs> bad end. Okay, I, I don't mind him letting it go, just in case. Well, Blind Pew might go for it here. He may not love it, but six bigs. He is going to show off Jack-7, and he gets the Jack-7 to fold in the big blind. So well done there by Blind Pew. Blinds go up again. Big blind right now, 300k. And Isaac Baron wakes up with Ace-King one more time. Isaac thinking, should he just open, rip it in, or just raise? I kind of like open jamming. Because you don't want to let Rudy defend that big blind and maybe you lose some chips because of how short the other two guys are. If the other two guys are deeper, I definitely would just be open raising. And ace three is open. Wow. He f what do you uh, make of this that? Oh, Isaac. Oh, what a suck. Okay, these are the spots I live for now. now. Yes, I'm a <laughs> sicko. But <laughs> oh, he knows that Rudy has been shipping all sorts of garbage. And the sevens fold. I mean... You can't blame him, but... Oh. I don't blame him. The hand is... Uh, he knows he's usually ahead, but the problem is he is flipping a lot, and it's just... This is a clinic right now for Rudy. Rudy just give him the money. Just let the other three guys just play it out for, for a third and second. Uh, Rudy, Jack-6. He's like, well, <laughs> if they keep folding, I keep shoving. I think Mikolai might fall, though. No, he no, falls. Ace deuce suited as well. Ace nine is out. Ace deuce is out. This is the dream scenario. Oh and no, because oh my god, this could be it. Three way. Six is my this chub. is the three way all in, right? The sixes okay. can't fold this. All right, and out. <laughs> this is it, guys. A three way all in, an ace or a six, and at least one of the other guys survives. Instead, it's we have over. a set of jacks, but there is a flush draw. Oh, or king. Flush draw. Flush draw working. Is that an ace? No, it is not. So it's a double KO. Does that mean that Arsene finishes in fourth place, right? Yeah, because he had less chips. So Arsene finishes in fourth place, $252,000. Mikolai still finishes third for $340,000 and some change. And we are heads up. And no, no, this doesn't really feel like a fair fight. But I guess we have seen crazier things in poker. But I mean, this is... Isaac's probably like... Thank God, I got two bust outs in one hand. This this is a potential all in and call hand. It depends on how Isaac decides to play it. Uh, but uh, that yeah, that's just a, a wonderful situation for Isaac Fair, and that's what he wanted. He wanted to fade out the two other guys. It is Rudy just shipping in and again, and the King Nine might might end up calling here. It is reasonable to call here. It is heads up. You limp the button. I wouldn't blame him if Isaac Baron calls here dominated. If he does make the call, he's obviously going to need a lot of help. Because he will indeed be dominated. This has been an, uh, a prime example of someone running away <laughs> with the victory of a final table. At one point when Rudy started to take a dominant ship lead, he's like, you know what? We are shipping everything. And he was 10-4 as well. He's going to make the race here and 9-4. Can't do much. If I'm Isaac Baron, I really just start shoving because every big blind is so valuable to him. If 
queen for Sura, you may as well shove. Like, there's a decent chance he will. He's got 13 right. big blinds. Usually, when he had it suited, you decide so, to shove. Is this it? This is indeed it. If Isaac does not get any help, then Rudy will be the 14th Ooh. champ. There is a queen on the turn, though. So, unless the river is an ace, we will continue. And the river is not an ace. So, Isaac Marin stays alive, chips up to 8.1 million. Last week, we had one of the most epic heads-up battles we've seen in a very long time. Hopefully, Nana, we can get something similar, but Isaac Baron is going to need to steal a few more chips. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah that Connor, Dryan, and Danny R match was crazy. But, of course, we just started this heads-up match. And now that Isaac Baron's doubled up, we've got a lot of poker to play. Um, he's got, you know, 25 big blinds or, or so. Uh, definitely... You can see him calling the king nine correctly. Rudy's got Jack Deuce. No, you know, he was probably thinking, I won this tournament, but once you double up your opponent, now you're thinking, hmm, maybe I don't. I, I really need to grind my opponent out. It's going to be another bet with just Jack Deuce high. He doesn't have anything. This is some insane read. Yep. And Isaac does, unfortunately, for I would almost say all of us, fold the best hand. These chips are very, very valuable to him. Jack 8 in the small blind as he now dropped down to 23 bigs. And uh, Rudy makes the call and makes top pair. It's not getting any better for Isaac, who does pick up a gut shot. Yeah, it is reasonable to always bet your inside straight draws and heads up because your opponent would just usually just whiff and check fold, but... Uh... Not for Rudy this time. Oh! And it's the straight for Isaac Barron. Isaac Barron is back in the game. Well, this can become a pretty juicy pot because it's a pretty well hidden straight as well, I'd say. I mean, uh, King Jack, Jack 8. It's like, uh, how, how likely is that really? Is Rudy going to let go of top pair? I mean, we know that Rudy is capable of folding top pair. He's done that many times, but this would be an insane spot to fold top pair. I mean, this is also heads up and a very drawy board. And I wow. think, uh, I don't think he's going to fold. It's just, that's, it'd be amazing. He has been folding correctly almost every single time. But uh, this is tough. Heads up early. Yep. Isaac Baron not sitting on the nuts, but the second nuts. And that is, uh, that definitely feels like the nuts when you're playing heads up. He will make the shot for 4.5 million. Rudy still sitting on top pair. And he like there's always this voice going through your mind. If I'm right here, the tournament is over, but he's not right now. No, he makes the call and Isaac Baron chips up all the way to 14 million. I don't know if we are just blessed with epic heads up matches at the final table of the higher order super millions, but uh this is really starting to look like oh. something. Oh my god, what is happening, Nanonoko? Isaac Barron was picked by Nanonoko. Don't forget, guys. He's, he's at the trip sixes against the over pair. Isaac Barron probably going to go for the check raise. And, man, he, Rudy needs a run out that saves him, like a, a spade over card or, you know, something like this. A six Poor would damn. be the worst card in the deck. Ace is a, is a, it's a safe card for him. It could maybe save him some chips, but I still think he's going to lose some more chips. Yeah. He might be able to... He doesn't have to double his opponent up in his hand, but... Ooh, wow, nice Isaac checks. Baron makes the check. Make, it makes it seem like he's got a 9, right? It looks like he's got a 9 or like just a, a, a bluff. And the thing is, Rudy can have a lot of bluffs. Try to induce them. The fact that Rudy checks back the turn, Isaac Baron should think he's got showdown value. Because if Rudy had like 10-8 straight draw, he probably would just bet the turn. So I would like to see Isaac bet here on the river card. Well, I, I definitely think he is going to bet. The question is how much. Well, he over bet spot. Hmm. I don't I think know how I would have felt about it. Uh, it, it. It doesn't really make that much sense for as a bluff, though. And that's a very nice vote for Rudy. Like, yeah. I'm not sure. I think Isaac got a little bit greedy. I think sometimes guys, they think like, oh, my line doesn't make sense, so let's just go for these big bets. But the thing is, it, it makes other people, if they're good hand reading, just like, yeah, it doesn't make sense for you to bluff this way either. Well, that could have been a lot worse for Rudy, but we are almost even at this point. 
And that is already one hell of a comeback by Isaac, who is still in the lead here, but Rudy has uh, around 17 million outs to make the best hand. <laughs> and he's actually just going to take it down on the turn. Well done. Yeah, it's, it's just a close match, right? Like, it looked like uh, Isaac Barron was uh, definitely out of this tournament, but uh, he's got two aces. But uh, yeah, he's he's not going to get more action here, I assume. Uh, mm. But uh, yeah, this is very close now. It, it, this could be a while. It, it, this is cool. Um, you know, Rudy's more of an all-in or fold kind of guy, right? <laughs> what did we start with? Was it? Uh, it was. Um, like Isaac 27 had like seven million to six million, right? I think twenty-seven. Yeah, Isaac to six, had like five to, to six million, I think. That's it's crazy that we're here already. I feel like at this point, Isaac has almost won it already. Because if I'm Rudy, I'd be like, "How the hell did this happen? Like, how did we get here?" You know, I was completely dominating stable. I was all inning everything. Everybody was folding. <laughs> Look at that aces on uh, Isaac Baron, and now aces on the side of Rudy. But neither aces uh, get any action. Ace is definitely not the action hand tonight, then, Nano. You were spot on when, uh, about that yeah, one. They, they tend to win like two big blinds, <laughs> maybe yeah. three sometimes, usually one. Ace three suited against Queen eight. I think we'll see a flop here. And we do. Ace three is still in the lead after making a pair of threes as well. This is the kind of board where Isaac Baron could maybe think about getting wild, but on the other hand, he's like, nah, there are better spots, right? Yeah. It's, no one ever believes you when you check raise the 5 3 2. Um, <laughs> oh, 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 two twos and two jacks, but they are super deep. So deep yeah. that it's, I don't really see Isaac Baron just four bet jamming 50 big blinds. It, it's, it, it would be quite excessive. I think it should go raise call. That'd be a that'd be a that'd be a punt. <laughs> I've seen a couple of crazy punts at these final tables. I remember the the sevens, right? Was it sevens or a seven against the aces? But I mean, it's heads up, so it's oh, oh it is going to be it all does. in. No, well, just, Rudy's, look, call. Rudy's looking for the emote. Yeah, he was looking for the just yeah. one time. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Isaac Barron did a great job in climbing. Oh, the a makes this set. on the flop. The Isaac nano Barron. noco blessing is more real than ever before. Rudy needs a jack, doesn't get the jack, and all of a sudden, Isaac Barron is a massive <laughs> chip leader. Can you believe it? Sucks out, hits his two outer. Nano noco, I don't know what kind of thing you've turned around in your life. But you went from cursing people to just blessing them with tournament victories. Yeah, they usually get like ninth or eighth or first, right? Um, and now he's got two aces. He's gonna li limp it, limp it, Isaac. There we go. Oh. And he's playing. Wait, he's, he's gonna playing. win the tournament with aces. <laughs> That's nothing more beautiful. <laughs> he's oh, gonna win it with aces. <laughs> he's gonna win it with aces. <laughs> I mean, oh, Rudy's going to think like, well, I've got no chips left. I have a pair of fours. Unbelievable. We started this heads up. 28 million chips for Rudy. 5 million for Isaac Baron. That oh, just goes man. to show. A chip and a chair is truly all you need. As now Isaac Baron is two cards away from winning this tournament. One card away now. It's just very bad news. But Rudy, yeah, it is pretty hard for him to punt the rest of this chips in this board texture, I would think. I don't know, man. A I mean, minimum bet. 1.9 million. There's 2.1 in the middle. Uh, I think you just, I think you send it. Look, look at this. Like, what are you going to do? Make a comeback <laughs> from 1.9? 1.6 now? <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I think it's going to go all in. Uh, especially now with the board pairing as well. I think he feels good about his four and just hopes his opponent has an ace. His opponent has an ace. The only issue is that he's got two. Rudy makes well, the does. fold. Gets okay. away, save that chance. Maybe he can get lucky on the next hand. He's got five big blinds. And well, two's five to, suited. Needs to get lucky on the next seven hands, Nano. <laughs> well, he just needs to get lucky on this hand. Ace nine and queen ten is going to be it. Yep, 100%. Ace-9 will make the call. 
Obviously, Ace Nine is a bit ahead, but Queen Ten has plenty of chances. That's not going to be it. So Rudy doubles up, <laughs> but oh, yeah. he doubles up to two point eight million. <laughs> he's so he's so lucky, man. He he won the oh, he won God, the big one. It. Poor guy. Man, Jax against Deuces. Oh oh, that's sick. It's sick okay. because of how many big blinds went in too, right? Yeah. Like, oh my god. And the, it's even sicker. I mean, it's, it's not over yet, but Isaac Barron did, never had this few chips in the heads up match. No. Isaac Barron had 5 million. So basically, if Rudy wins another all in, gets a full double up, then Rudy is above where Isaac uh, started the heads up match. But that was already a miraculous comeback to see two of those. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so fast too the thing is like yeah. you know usually these comebacks they take danny r and connor dryden and played for a while right but this one was like super quick but it's not over but it, it's looking that way yeah well isaac is gonna put rudy to the test here and rudy will fold nine eight i actually like i don't know i i know it's not correct but i wouldn't have minded to see him call and just hope to get a double up there like as long as you <laughs> You've got two life cards, like eight, nine flops. The, the holiday play, the six four offs. Oh, Let's just well, go no, for it. Well, that's different because holiday did it with like twenty seven big lines. You know that was a bit uh, unnecessary. But I think when you're sitting on uh, six, seven, eight bigs, then I, I I don't hate it that much. I know it's not correct, but I don't hate it. Rudy does have this, a nut flush draw here. At this point, you're just thinking, what well, what else can go wrong, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, Ace Nine is still in the lead. But if Isaac fires half a million here, which he oh, does. Wow. Isaac is on point right now. This is a very nice read because the wow. truth is, if Rudy had a pair, he would have bet by now because of how short his stack is. $467,000 for second place, but the winner of the tournament will walk away with $636,000. And it's starting to look like Nana Noko has picked back to back winners. <laughs> you know, maybe I just do better in the smaller fields. All there right, we this go. Is it. Eight six suited all in. Isaac makes the call. King three suited and flops <laughs> the, <laughs> the nuts. Yep, and that is going to be it. Well, can he two pair full house? No, <laughs> no full house, and that means that Isaac Baron will win the 14th edition. Of the high roller super millions, uh, I'll play that over at GG Plays and walk away with $636,000, the second biggest first place prize we've had. One hell of a journey tonight, Nanonoko. Where do we even begin to recap everything we just saw? It was a $180,000 heads up match, roughly, and it, it was in Rudy's hands. He didn't grab the money, it floated away over to Isaac Baron. Who turned it around? It was like 23 million to 4 million chips or so at one point. And Isaac Barron now has all the chips. It all came down to those pocket deuces into the pocket jacks. Now it was a bit excessive, but they were playing for a lot of chips, but it it's not a bad play to jam the two deuces. It's just very high variance. Because the truth is these guys with three bet bluff definitely heads up and they're just gonna have to fold. You pick up some hands. You often you call the three bet, it's like Deuces don't play well post up too, so it's not a bad play. It was just a very lucky hand for Isaac Bear. Uh, he was he played very very solid, but you know before we talk more about Isaac Bear, I think we got to give it up to Rudy. Rudy played really well. I thought he played the best post flop or just the best in general. His pre flop game against Yuri was on point. He reshelved on him like. With the two fours, knowing he's going to fold two eights. He reached out on ace deuce offsuit with very shallow stacks. And you know, you saw the when he had all the chips, what did he do? Jam, 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 jam. I but love the thing that. is, I love that. It was great, right? Because he knew they would all fold. And he was jamming so wide. And he, he almost won the tournament through that. There was a double KO, right? To knock out those two short stacks finally. Yeah. And then, you know, Isaac Barron. He came back. He, he played really solid, I think, throughout this final table. I thought he played really good as well. He made that one big lay down for two queens. But the thing is, maybe he jams those two queens, and maybe he doesn't get first place. Maybe he wins that pot and smooths him off. Maybe he loses that pot, and everything would be different. Maybe it all started with those two queens folding. 
to that ace jack cold four bet. Yeah, the long con, right? Like makes it seem <laughs> like he is the tightest player of all time. And eventually, definitely made a couple of cool moves. Uh, the double KO was pocket jacks as well, correct? Correct. Pocket jacks knocked yeah. out. I can't. I think it was sixes and ace five offsuit. I think that's correct. Yeah, I think that's what it was. Ace five offsuit, and pocket sixes. So the pocket jacks give, and the pocket jacks take because they couldn't <laughs> hold up against the deuces. Oh, oh, I mean, it was a very different final table than uh, some of the like crazy fighting tables we've had, like in week five, six, seven, eight. I feel like it truly was the Wild Wild West where, uh, you know, we just saw the craziest plays nonstop and like some ultra light calls. But I definitely feel like it had its very fun moments. It started off explosive. And then I feel like we had the most proper grind hour where I felt that every half a million of chips mattered more than we've seen at any of the other final tables. And then in the end, I loved it when, like, Rudy had, like, over 20 million chips. He was playing this like a hyper-turbo. Where he's like, you know what? You know, we're not playing... The, the blinds don't go up by time here. They go up by hand. So if you just all in, all in, all in, all in, then it kind of almost becomes a hyper-turbo at this final table. And I love to see that. I, I think he played great. Obviously, this is nothing you can do. You know, when your opponent is shoving 50 bigs into you in a heads-up match, you're going to make the call with Jax. Like I mentioned earlier, the quote... It's a cold day in hell before a full pocket jacks pre flop, especially in a heads up match. No, no, I don't think we can really blame Rudy for anything. Uh, I think overall it was a fun run. And what, what makes me most happy is to see that the field just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Of course, last week was insane because of the WSOP. Uh, but yeah, even this week, having still 352 entries, I think this is awesome. Yeah. Well, I do want to point out um, Rudy and Isaac Barron both came to the final table as number one and number two spot. It did look like Rudy was going to ship it first, but he still get top two. It's very good. It's almost like he shipped one of the other uh, super millions, right? He won 467,000 still. Um, but, you know, you didn't know who Isaac Barron was before. You know, I told you, like, this guy is playing for a really long time. They consider him one of the best tournament players way back when. He was card player of the year in 2007, 12 years ago, right? Um, kind of was quiet for a bit, didn't really play online at all, uh, but then just came back to the live scene maybe four or five years ago and really just been doing really well still. And he still has got the game. You can tell from his way of play, he still understands poker very well and it's still very good. He's done his homework and um, I'm, I'm happy to see him win and uh, I would love to see him continue to play these tournaments and mo most certainly he will, right? This is not the first time he's played it. Yeah. No, I mean, I said it in the pre-show and you got me incredibly excited. I was like, man, that's cool because I did follow poker already in 2006, 2007 a uh, bit. I mean, that's around the time that uh, Elke got like Supernova Elite for the first time ever, right? And that was a really big deal back then in the poker world. And, you know, that Niels also reached my Warcraft 3 world back then and kind of kept track of it. And I wanted to pick him, to be fair, you know, like you pick <laughs> first. Otherwise, I would have picked him because I love the story. And I was like, you know what, I'm on board. And uh, I do believe that if you can make it to the top once upon a time, if you truly put in the hours and the work, you can do it again. And uh, he played great. Uh, honestly, like loved a lot of the plays. The Queens, we'll forget about that. Other than that, I think it was an awesome performance by uh, Isaac Barron. It was really fun to watch him play tonight. Well, Nano, I think that is going to be it. Do you have any final words for our 14th show already? Can you believe that? Technically, two full weeks of you and I together on the Tuesday evening. Yeah, it's uh, it's been awesome, man. And like, it's it's been a lot of shows. And I'll see you for the 15th one next week. <laughs> I'm already looking forward to it. One more time, guys. The Small Stakes series is currently happening over at GG Poker. Started September 12th. We'll run all the way to September 27th. So if you're enjoy enjoying these shows, but you're like, 10K is a little much. There's a lot of really fun tournaments starting almost every single day at this point. Uh, so make sure to check that out. You guys can always use GGTV, a sign-up bonus as well. And if you're not following the Twitch channel yet, what are you waiting for? There is cool, unique content heading your way each and every single day. I've been really enjoying some of the other shows that GG Poker has been bringing on this channel as well. So hopefully you guys do too. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. And make sure to play the Beat the Pros on Saturday. I'll definitely be playing that Saturday 1 p.m. I don't know which time zone that is. I don't think it's Central European time. It must be UTC. Yeah, that's happening every Saturday. That's a lot of fun. A lot of famous poker players, a lot of influencers, a lot of streamers. So if you got a spare Saturday, I hope to see you in that tournament. Just don't race pocket fours against me. If you guys can do that, I look forward to seeing you there. Take care and see you next week.